Well, yeah, but we're, we're like tripping over each other. Um, I just finished a thing with uh, something called Hawaii emergency uh, response, something or another resilience thing coming out of the state. And uh, they finished a whole bunch of informational things. All right, you guys, we're going to go ahead and call the meeting for order. <laughs> uh, we are at 6.03 p.m. calling the Kahalu Neighborhood Board. Meeting to order, um, we're going to start off with the emergency responder monthly reports. Uh, we do have Hawaii Fire Department here in person. If you guys wanted to go ahead and give your report, just step up to the mic. Can you hear me? Okay, there we go. Firefighter Mike Stetson with Engine 37, Kahulu Fire Station, right up the road. Thank you for having us tonight. Uh, for the month of September, um, actually, okay. for the month of September, uh, we responded to, we had zero structure fires. We had uh, two wildland or brush fires, uh, three nuisance fires. Uh, Zero cooking fires and one activated alarm, no fire. Um, as far as medical alarms, responded to 52 medical alarms. Um, as far as anything else? No. Okay, so monthly message um, Fire Safety Month, October. Uh, smoke alarms make them work for you. Uh, so, uh, this year, the National Fire Protection Association's Fire Prevention Week campaign strives to educate everyone about the importance of having working smoke alarms in the home. More information and resources, uh, you can visit fpw.org. Um, and then I can open it up to any questions that you guys may have. Any questions for Hawaii Fire? Uncle Dan. Yeah, Mike. Last time we talked about the Kahalu Regional Park, Wahi Road, and okay. Mayman. So I know, and I'm delighted that you made an emergency response to the people who live behind the park in okay. the bushes. Would you tell us how often it happens that you're going out, not only to the park, not only to houses, but to the people who live there behind the homeless folks? Because that was really a good thing that you did that. I'm just curious to know. Yeah, uh, I know that that was a, another watch um, that responded this month. Uh, that was not us as far as how often we respond there. Uh, I would say it's probably give or take once a month or so. Um, I can't I can't speak to that alarm. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but yeah, we do we do frequent. Um, so the problem that we were talking about is loose dogs. Okay. So when you go there, the folks who live in the bushes. They have loose animals, right? So I just, I didn't know if you knew. Yes, yes, yes. Hang on one sec, my captain is going to come. Hi, good evening, uh, Captain. Captain Lapin on Kalu Fire Station with SETS. So to, uh, to, to add on to that question, we did recently have a, a, a lady come up to the fire station who had been attacked by one of those dogs. She was torn up pretty good and um, uh, it, I, it was one of the loose dogs, I believe. It wasn't us that treated her, but it was another watch. Um, she was asked if she wanted to get the cops involved and go ahead and see about pressing charges and whatnot. She didn't want to do that. I believe it was the wife of a retired fireman, so she didn't want to cause any trouble. But from what I understand, she was um, she she was she was hooked up pretty good. Um, the dogs in the in the park are definitely a concern. I would. I would refer that to law enforcement because there's really not a lot we can do except protect ourselves when we respond in the back here. Because we have had to, um, you know, take measures to avoid the loose dogs back there while we're responding to patients in the, um, in the I don't know what you want to call it, encampment or what, whatever it is back here. So, sure. so we're kind of flummoxed on that issue because when we talk to the police, the police tell us go to the Humane Society and the Humane Society may or may not respond in a timely way. Yeah, and I that's understand. why she went to you because she knew that somebody would respond. Sure. Because I, I spoke with her and it's not, you know, it's not one dog. It's like 
bunch of them. Exactly. exactly. And so when you have more than one dog, are you able to put them down quickly for to, to your own safety? Um, I, I, I don't know about putting them down quickly, but we have enough guys and we have enough um, capability, I would say, to ensure our safety. And we would go as far as we needed to go in order to, number one, take care of the community and the people in the community and for their safety and ours. After that, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'll, I'm not sure how far to go with that. But yeah, we, we definitely are, uh, are aware and we take measures to protect ourselves back there for sure. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Any other I'll, questions? Well, I got that. Yeah, if I can add to that, thanks. I, when you guys came in, I spoke with Michael and asked him about my Connie. Um, uh, how many fires are you responding to? And I think, I'm thinking that um, it's great to have the reports of the neighborhood board, but how do we take it to a stage where we can really help to resolve the issues? And as you're talking, I'm thinking back to in Waikane, for example, um, quite a few years ago, uh, my nephew was a policeman, and, he, and, and we, we ended up having meetings with the, uh, the district administration, mm -hmm. with HPD. And um, they were, it was really positive because we had Parks Department there, we had HPD there, we had DLNR there, everybody, you know, those kind of summit meetings, way beyond what a neighborhood board could do. Sure, I'm sure. thinking with you folks, too, if, if actually there were uh, an opportunity to sit down, you could do it here, um, it was done here before, um, mm -hmm. but to sit down with HFD, HPD, Parks, you know, kind of a little bit of a summit meeting and really have a good, robust discussion about how, how do we collectively respond to these kinds of issues? The number of fires constantly in Waikani, as we know, yeah. um, you know, these kinds of incidents where you have a uh, lack of any real parks department control sure. what's going on in the, in the backwoods of Honolulu Regional Park. But if you guys would be open to that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if, if you guys aren't fully aware of what goes on back there, we are back there, gosh, all the time for rubbish fire, trash fire, car fires, refrigerators, roofing material, brush, pallets, vehicles. I mean, just you name it, we're back there all the time. And it's Waikani Valley Road, Waikani Valley Road in particular. And for us, it's a, it's a logistics nightmare because there is no fire hydrants up top. So we have to shuttle water from Cam Highway all the way up top back and forth in order to put these things out. Sometimes it's small the size of this room. Sometimes it's big, like an acre or two with three or four cars going at the same time. So for us, it's, it's, a, it's logistically, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a small nightmare up there sometimes. Um, for what, what we're wondering, we are not completely sure of is whose property is it? Yeah, is it a private, is it, is it a private owner? Is it state property? Who do we call, who's responsible? Because the areas that are burning are either is it it's on the road or it's up to the right north or, or Kahuku side of the road so we're, we're not really sure who to call the police are there all the time when we're fighting the fires they come up they do their investigation uh and but we're not sure where it goes from there it, it's a problem for us yes Rick. all of that all of those statistics together, something together. and uh, you know i want to help with that I mean, I live in Waiholi, I see it. I've called it in many times too. Sure. Luckily, there are not that many landowners. They just have huge areas. And so yeah. without really good GPS mapping and coordination and so on between you folks, HPD, whatnot, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard. So yeah, we'll work on that. We'll be in touch. Yeah, we would love, we would love answers. Yeah, right. Uncle Rick? Oh yeah, yeah. We 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 can pinpoint where the last one was, where the one before that was, and you know, and just kind of, you know, there's a, there's a few areas there that are pretty, uh, pretty pretty frequent for us. Appreciate that. Yeah, and we appreciate you guys being concerned about that too, because sometimes as firefighters, we feel like we're kind of, we're we're just the gurus. We're just going all the time with no re, with no recourse on how to how to take care of this. How to avoid. There's a huge criminal element involved too. So uh, really. No, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> you guys. I think so. Sorry. We'll get the follow up and appreciate. Okay, cool. Members. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Captain. Any other questions for HFD? Nope. Uh, Ian, online. Go ahead. Uh, real quick. Thank you, Captain. Um, hey, can can you are are those like tire fires and those other things you described? Are those nuisance fires or is that a fire in someone's backyard that you respond to because you got a complaint? Um, can you help clarify that for me? Because we have actually had 
couple people reach out about like commercial cooking going on in the backyard that's you know smoking people out yeah yeah those would be uh considered nuisance fires when when we go to uh these cooking fires or so-called cooking fires in people's yards uh, a lot of times they're masking what they're doing and try to hide behind emu or something like that um they're trying to burn uh leaves and brush and and branches and whatnot uh, so uh, those would also be considered nuisance fires, but the ones on White County Valley Road in particular, those are definitely nuisance fires because they're uh, they're burning uh, hydrocarbons, they're burning you know tires and cars and refrigerators and and whatnot, pallets uh, in separate separate piles, pretty much away from houses, but you know out out in the open. Yeah. Great, thanks for explaining that to me. It helps okay, clarify yeah. a lot. You're you're welcome. Mahalo, Marie online. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is Marie Samudio from KK Cert. The fire department had a wonderful exhibit at the emergency preparedness fair at the mall in the, in the uh, spring. And one of the things that uh, you guys had brought was um, your drone mm -hmm. uh, to show to the public. Are you able to use that to like monitor this area that's so problematic? So um, that, that's a good question. So we do have a drone program. We use it in all different areas of the fire department for search, for fires, for brush fires. Uh, there's lot, lots of capability. Um, as far as monitoring the area, I don't, I don't see the fire department being, being involved in any type of actual ongoing monitoring, but we could request the drone uh, as soon as we get a call uh, to fight a fire back there to help us to see if it got big enough uh, to see how big it's gotten, where it's going, what's ahead, and to maybe help us uh, help us battle the blaze if it gets that big. We haven't had to do that yet, but uh, the drones are more for the uh, more for the um, the alarm itself rather than uh, rather than the, the monitoring of in a certain area. At so least we don't have we don't have a drone. Where is it? Uh, we meaning the fire department. We we in Kahalu. Oh, no, so the, nice. the drone program, oh, that, that's a good question. Each company is not outfitted with a drone. Um, there is a drone program. They're based out of uh, Kapole. And uh, there's a few uh, pilots, they call them, and they've got some really expensive, good big drones that they use. Uh, but in order to get them activated, uh, we need to call them, and they need to come out to the scene. So, no, they, uh, we don't all have drones. As much as we'd like to have a cool drone on our truck, we, we, don't, we don't have one. Not yet. All the cap. Any other questions? HFD. I've seen on Mahalo, you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for the time. Great. That's it. Thanks, gang. Uh, moving on, HPD. Uh, I think we should, yeah, there we go. Officer, online. Oh, sorry. Officer, if you can unmute, I think you're muted. There we hello, go. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, there we go. Go ahead, officer. Okay, hello. I'm Lieutenant Villa Flor um, with the County Oye Police. Uh, reporting on the stats for September, we had zero motor thefts. Burglaries, thefts, EMVs, train vehicles, on But there was two um, motor vehicles. Two so, could you guys hear me on that? It's kind of spotty. If you want to try one more time, actually, I think it's actually yeah, so coming the, in there a little bit. Okay. So, for, sep uh, for September, motor vehicle thefts, there was zero. Um, burglary, zero. Thefts, there were eight thefts. There were three UEMVs. That's unauthorized entry into motor vehicles. And there were zero robberies. Um, for the previous month, um, motor vehicle thefts, there were two. Zero burglaries, same amount of thefts for eight. That was eight thefts. Um, there are only two UEMVs and, then, and zero robberies for the previous month. 
Mahalo. Any questions for HPD? Yep. Uncle John. Just a, a quick follow-up, Officer. Um, you heard the discussion a little bit just earlier with um, the fire department. No, sorry, sir. I just I was, I was okay. in my lineup. I was just able to look. Okay. No, no, no problem. They were. I just, we caught, were I just caught the drone. Yeah. Okay. Um, we were talking about um, the number of incidents concentrated in certain areas, Kahalu Regional Park concerns, but also Waikani uh, Valley with uh, fires and so on that you folks have been called to as well. And um, I was suggesting that uh, kind of a summit meeting between the various parties involved, whether it's Parks Department, um, HFD, HPD, and so on, and asking, I was asking about their willingness to come to the table, maybe a meeting here at Key, sort of a district meeting of uh, interagency so that we could get to the bottom, get to the solutions. So I just wanted to pose that to you folks and uh, ask if you could take that back to uh, the district for uh, administration. Oh, for sure, sir. Definitely. Okay, thanks. Mahalo, Uncle John. Any other questions? Anyone online? Christine Dunn, Mahalo. Thanks, Lieutenant. Have a great night. Okay, thank you. Good night. Okay, moving on, we have agenda point number three, filling of vacancies on the board, uh, starting with election of officers. Uh, anyone like to be nominated or nominate someone for the uh, officer position of secretary. Seeing none in person. Anyone online? Okay, none online. We'll defer this till next agenda. Um, we have board member vacancies, sub district six. We have two vacancies. Anyone in person like to nominate someone for sub district six? Seeing none. Anyone online? Okay, we'll defer this. To next agenda, we um, I do have a, a couple flyers here, but we'll address that later on in the meeting. Um, so we're going to move on to point number four: city, state, federal reports. We have Mayor Rick Blangiardi's office. We have Regina online. I think I saw her online. There she is. Regina. Hi. Aloha. Sorry, I'm trying to get my oh, go video ahead. up. <clears throat> okay, I'm sorry. For some reason, my camera is not going on. And I'm at my office. Wait, hold on one sec. Okay, I apologize if you guys are okay without yeah. seeing my face. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Go ahead. Okay. Hello, Chair and uh, members of the board and community members. My name is Regina Malupei. Um here. On behalf of the mayor's office, um, and um, I am second deputy of the Department of Planning and Permitting. Um, I am entering the October 2024 mayor's newsletter um, in the chat for you all to see. Um, and then I have an announcement from the Department of Environmental Services. I'm um, regarding sewer service charges. Um, this, the city's Department of Environmental Services plans to increase its sewer service charges for all residential and commercial customers in fiscal year 2026, which begins on um, July 1st, 2025. ENB wishes to present information at all upcoming neighborhood board meetings um, on the reasons for the increase, the amount of the increase, and what the additional revenue revenue will be used for. Um, so we are they are asking all board chairs to contact um, either the director or uh, deputy, which I I can put their contact information in the chat as well, to set up your board's presentation and to ask questions. Put that up. Put it in the chat. Um, and then we have one item here to follow up on. Um, it was from the Department of Facility Maintenance, DFM, as well as the Department of Transportation Services, DTS, in regards to a collaboration on getting a tractor. Uh, the question was, can the state and city do a collaboration on getting a tractor to cut the grass along Kamehameha Highway near Waihole? 
DTS deferred to DFM and the state, um, and then the Department of Facility Maintenance says um, that this portion of Kamehameha Highway near Waihole is under state DOT maintenance jurisdiction, and the state DOT is believed to have tractor mowing equipment available. That's all I have, um, but I'm here if you have any questions. Or concerns. Rocky, like you had a question. Is this working? I have a question. So I know everybody's going to be um, down the charge for the sewage, but most of Kalu is already accessible, so they still have to pay that price. And that's that's it. Could you take that back to the mayor and ask him? I don't see why we we should pay. We'd love to have a hookup with the sewage, but evidently we still, the majority of us have cesspools. I don't think we should be paying for sewage. Um, if we have our cesspools. Yes. And another thing is, I got, you know, I remember when I was younger, City and County always had Kamehameha Highway, especially down by from the Haiku to Hygienic Store, was immaculate. They even had hibiscus trees. And they took time to clean. It was never like this. Now, half of the time, you got to drive to bushes. It's dangerous around the corners. So I see the point. Maybe you got it, you guys gotta get some just somebody just doing the highways. Just get a crew to do to trim the highways. This is something to look into. Mahalo. Okay, thank you. John. Hello, Regina. Um, just to follow up on that, the, you know, I was the one who raised the question about the uh the, the collaboration, potential collaboration between DOT, DTS between state and county um regarding uh, tractor with it, particularly specifically with an articulated arm to one side so that it can mold the sides. DOT does have such a tractor. And you're right, um, from hygienic store, from the roundabout going out towards, you know, North Shore is all state highway. But from the roundabout going to Haiku Road, mm -hmm. along the, what we call the beach road, is city. And so that's the reason for asking for the collaboration, why the state and the county would both need uh, a vehicle to do that kind of maintenance when they could collaborate on that. And what, what uh, Rocky is saying is absolutely true. It used to be immaculate. We didn't used to have guinea grass. Guinea grass is growing by leaps and bounds. You can mow it, and uh, you know, a week later, it's a foot high. Two weeks later, it's two, three feet high. So that's why that collaboration is so, so essential um, between state and county. So if you could, if you, if you could kind of go back and, or help us into a conversation, uh, a joint conversation, um, so that we can, we can, uh, Express this and, and uh, um, you know help help you folks understand what the issue is from our perspective. The other thing is, um, as you're coming over the bridge, over the flood control lagoon outlet, um, and approaching the intersection of of Kamehameha Highway and and uh, well, Kaikili, um, you know there are vendors now that are operating off of land that may be hygienic store property very likely looks like it's on city and county of Honolulu Park's property on the Malka side, uh, um, I mean, Kaneohe side of the bridge, Malka side of the highway. And, um, you know, I'm all for vending and uh, selling produce and whatnot, but not there. It's a really dangerous place to be doing that. Mm -hmm. um, people come through that intersection and make a turn into, uh, across both lanes of traffic to get to those vendors. So if you could please look into that, um, I can't imagine that DOT would allow vending. They don't allow vending going up Kaikiri Highway. Um, there are no vending signs, but now is the time to uh, bring that, to bring that in to bring that um, to, to resolve that. Um, yeah, that's mostly what I got for you. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> actually, I have one more thing. Sure. Were, were you in on the on the uh, brief discussion we had with HFD and then HPD? I caught oh. all, I caught all of HPD, but I need. Okay, so yeah. so I was asking, we were asking about um, setting up some kind of a summit meeting that would bring together um, the fire department, police department, parks department, DLNR as needed, um, particularly focused on Waikani. Waikani has 500 acres of land that is under the city and county of Honolulu parks, and uh, it's actually a portion of that is now under um, the emergency services. But it's really critical to, and then the Malka portion, another 1400 acres is, is privately owned 
Um, HHFDC has land nearby. So we have had summit meetings like this around the issue of cars being stripped by the hundreds. Um, now what we're dealing with is some of that, a lot of criminal activity that HPD gets called to, HFD gets called there all the time. The burning is taking place on both public and private lands, and it's trash, it's from, it's from nearby, and um, it needs to be dealt with. It's not gonna be dealt with unless we bring together the various parties that have overlapping jurisdictions, then we're gonna resolve it. And we know that this can be done, so we're gonna need your help in doing that. Bringing DPP, bringing the, the district uh, administrators for both HFD and HPD and so on. Happy to work with you on that. We can okay. follow. Mahalo, Uncle John. Uncle Rick. Just as a follow up, Mahalo, um, this is Rick Towell. Um, to John's comment, I put a bug in Ed Sniffin's ear about relocating the vendors down in that little low, low spot where the folks were mud, mud bogging during the wet season, and he was kind of open to that. So you might consider that as being a temporary place at least to relocate some of those folks because Ed agreed that, that it's, it's a poor location for folks to be a, so close to the roundabout. I had kind of a more of a 60,000 foot, um, um, and sorry to always be a thorn in your side, but um, I'm just always worried about the future. Should we have, and I think it's um, not should we have, when we have a major hurricane that could actually march out the middle of this island, and I'm watching all of the um, coverage of Hurricane Helene, and we're, we've yet to see what happens with this latest one, but um, the um, just the sheer amounts of trash and debris that's generated from these storms is staggering. Those of us who lived through Hurricane Iniki, or Eva 82 and then 92 Hurricane Iniki, which we didn't really suffer that badly on Oahu as much as Kauai did, but um, certainly Hurricane Eva, there was just a bunch of stuff. And, and you have to really think that the population and human um, occupation of this island was not nearly as much as it is today. I mean, there's just so much stuff, so many buildings, and really no place to put all of this stuff. One of the things that that, that I thought about is I've always um, felt that um, H power is the little engine that could, you know, everybody berated it, but it's it's really chugged along and it's done its job. Back in the Eva days, we had the Kapaa landfill. Now you have Waimanalo Gulch that's um, almost at capacity, and you have that private um, construction landfill, PVT, which is, that's nearly sunsetting in the next couple of years. So where's all this stuff gonna go? So <clears throat> the mayor's office and council might consider um, putting an H power plant at Kapa just at least to help um, help alleviate some of that load because you think we got problems with um, fires and people setting fires when you have piles of this debris all over the place, it's just gonna be a mess. Um, thanks for your time. Aloha. Mahalo. Any other questions in person? Online? Seeing none. Oh, Anthony Rocky, one more? Yeah, go ahead. I just want to um, really what um, Rick was talking about. A few years ago when we went to Maui, uh, we were at the hotel, we drove out to eat our dinner, and there was a section of the highway in area, like you were talking about the circle, had all vendors over there. And it was so crowded with people, even the local people. I think we should have something like this in our community. If they want a vendor, you know, we can support the community that way. And I enjoy it. Sometimes I used to pick, pick up a lunch plate for $10 for my family when I'm on the way to meetings like this. You can look into that. Mahalo. Thank you, Antiraki. Anyone online or in person with any other questions for Regina, mayor's office? Christine Nunn, Mahalo, Regina. You have a good night. Thank Mahalo. You time. Thank you, everyone. Okay, moving on to Council Member Estrikia Aina's office. We have Kim Ryan uh, online. Uh, good evening, uh, Chair and Board Members. Just uh, three quick announcements uh, that Council Member wanted to share. Bill 64 CD1 2024 will be heard in her Planning and the Economy Committee meeting on Tuesday, October 22nd at 9 p.m. She anticipates final consideration of the bill um, on November 21st. That would be the final reading. And then let's see, resolution 24243 
uh, involves re reconvening the Council's Agricultural Development Task Force. The Committee on Planning and the Economy will also be discussing this matter. And I'll put all the information in the chat. She also wanted to make sure you folks were aware that Oahu voters will have a chance to weigh in on four charter amendments, um, one being the council member salaries, uh, climate resiliency fund, Department of Emergency Management, and the Ocean Safety Commission. All of this I'll include in the um, chat here and then I can take any questions. Any questions for Councilmember Kiaina's office? Any online? Oh, Ian, yeah, go ahead, brother. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Uh, just well, um, for one thing, woo, let's let's get that Ocean Safety Committee through. Um, thank you for doing that. And number two, you know, Bill sixty four is that the one mm -hmm. that looking at selling uh, rights to so it's, air it's space? Use, it's land use more so. It, it's, it's many different pieces. It's a very complex bill. It's a very complex bill. So part of that yeah. bill is actually like uh, buying and selling air rights over sacred spaces. So that's pretty scary. Um, um, is there like what is there things that we should know about this or or things that we um, uh, should respond to that. Um, it's just a right. really interesting thing. Yeah, go ahead. So your exact question is, is what about this bill, Ian? Um, uh, I guess this is the bill that, re that, that many different things, part of that is actually buying and selling air rights over sacred spaces. So that would be like somebody could actually buy the rights over a church or a heiau or something like that. What are the connotations of that? What is the implications? I mean, you no, know, um, I don't know, but I can find out and I can get that back to you if that's okay. Okay. But I got your even... question and then I'll check on it for you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Kim. Um, you are. And it, that's actually going through before our next meeting, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is being considered in this next. It's going to be before our next meeting. So I'll get it to you as soon as I can. I'll just go through it with some of our policy personnel and then we'll get back to you. Thanks. Uh, I appreciate you and, and thanks for letting everyone know, because I think it's one that's worth looking into. And, um, it's the implications of that are big. Thank you. Sure. Molly in. Um, one more question from Uncle Dan over here. Uh, just a real quick question, short one. Could you find out for us what items are in the CIP budget that impact our neighborhood and their status? In other words, this is kind of the operating budget's already in, so the CIP budget's probably coming in. And we usually make suggestions to the council person uh, who may or may not be the budget chair. Sometimes they are. But often they can, you know, help us get minor, small fixes into the budget at the last minute. So if you could tell us what's already there, we'll think about what maybe we would like to add. Thank okay. you so much for your help. We'll put something together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, if there's no other questions, mahalo Kim, thank you for your time. Have a great night. Mark, can I help? Yeah. So, sorry, I'm going to go ahead. We, we, we always talk about, I'll put this in the chat. I'm sitting right here. I don't see that chat. I don't know where that chat is going to be. I'm not that adept at all. If something like a bill is being referred to, um, I think that needs to be in our minutes. Um, it needs to be linked. Not that matter. It's, um, if it's like the minutes are coming to us online, I like to see blue with an underline so I can click on it and I can go right to it. By the time um, any any uh, official gets back to us next one, let's go. Uh, so so it's really critical. You can't just put things in chat and think that that's getting to the public or to neighborhood board members. So yeah, that's my very simple. Sounds good. Thanks, Uncle John. Um, Uncle Ken online. Uh, yeah, I, I'm concerned about uh, the chat because numerous times we've had it's in the chat, it's in the chat, and then at the end of the meeting, they go, "Oh, okay, can we get a copy of the chat?" 
And every time I've heard, is, oh, no, it's deleted already. So we have no copy of the chat. But if, if we can get a copy, a simple text file, whatever it takes, of the chat, that would be great because then we would and they get mailed to each board member that has an email address. If we can get the copy of the chat, that would be extremely helpful. Thank you. Yeah, well, um, you know, we can go ahead and ask Rachel and she, uh, she can make, make a comment. on. Okay, uh, I guess to make it easier for everyone, I can copy the chat and put it in the Google Drive. Would that work? So then when you on it would for me, uh, my, my Google drive seems to be empty. Oh, I mean, it has to be on the, uh, you gotta go to the neighborhood board, Google drive. So, you know, like on the agenda, um, is, oh, meeting Wait, materials. I went, I went to the neighborhood board one and, and the one for neighborhood board 29 is empty. I can uncle, uncle Ken, you know, I'll, I'll work with Rachel. I'll have her send me everything from the chat. And then I'll be sure to disseminate that either when I get home right after the meeting or the morning right after. So I'll I'll take it that fully on and um get that. Oh, great. To the Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll work with Rachel. No problem. Um Marie, you had a question? Yeah, Chair, it just says that messages are saved, so they're somewhere. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. So that's... they are archived. But uh, you know, we record all the meetings, so everything is on record. Um that's how we go back in and check minutes. So We'll, we'll have some kind of source and we'll get that out to the members prior to the meetings. Um, and then right after for any meetings that they're currently. In. Real quick chair. Yep. Go ahead. Um, uh, Ken, if you go on our agenda this month and you see that there's some um, materials for materials. It's 1 of it's the link below our, our meeting link. And it does, it has 2023, 2024 and several other documents that are happening right now. So on the Google Drive, so it's been updated and it's there. Um, Thank you. Thanks well, for the previously confirmation. Previously, I checked and it's been empty. Uh, nothing on there. Yeah, it's got NCO resources and presentations and older folders for for these years. Um, the, the last two years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Kim. Appreciate your time. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to Councilmember Matt Wire's office. Uh, do we have Chelsea online? I don't think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're gonna uh, go ahead and skip over council member's office. Uh, we're gonna skip to Bar uh, Board of Water Supply. Is Barry online? Barry coming in lately. There's Barry. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead brother. Well, sure. Uh, and there was, um, I have nothing to report actually on, on, the, on the monthly. Uh, but here for the, uh, uh, I guess further on the agenda, the, uh, there's a question about radio. So, thank you. Anything for Boda Water Supply? Members in person? Go, John. Uh, Barry, um, we can wait to maybe the start of the year, but we can't wait too long. We got to get, we got to convene. Uh, a working group, a restoration advisory board around the uh, YHA formerly used defense site. Just a reminder. Yeah. So something to look forward to. Good fun. That really needs to happen. In order, in order for us to implement the uh, YHA riparian restoration plan that's, that has a, you know, a final environmental assessment that we, you know, we work with you folks, John, and the community on doing. And then having it, having found that, you know, it's contaminated, like it, it was just a, it was just a, a, what a blow. It really needs to be cleaned up. So thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, thanks. Maybe, maybe um, to get that started in looking ahead, maybe early months of the year to get uh, G70 did that study on behalf of Board of Water Supply, correct? Yes. Yeah, and maybe, maybe we could get a, uh, uh, that as an, a major agenda item and have a presentation so that people can understand exactly what what was discovered, what we're dealing with. That would be really helpful. The other thing would be to invite uh, Kevin Pian Pian uh, from uh, uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers um, to to uh, be as a part of that 
presentation. That'd be helpful. Thanks, Barry. And you, bring, and you bring up a good point because when we first, you know, found it and we talked to the Army Corps, it was like, well, we've got a lot of sites, you know, all over the place, and it, it, I think it would, the 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 takeaway from that meeting was that if the community would you know be requesting that and make it you know a higher priority by you know bringing it up a resolution perhaps you know to our congressionals i don't know something that would like bring that up to the uh, you know bring it higher on the priority list so uh, that was that I, that's what i heard clearly it's got so many yeah so parker can we put that on our agenda for the next meeting a resolution relating to that we're going to use defense site FUDs and RAB Restoration Advisory Board and a presentation associated with that. Thanks. Sounds good. Uncle Rick? Barry, shortly after um, we were informed that there was that lead contamination, a um, number of us thought about it and actually talked to Larry Higo, who's a long longstanding resident of the Valley and was here during the war years. Actually, at the bottom of our property is where the military used to do their target practice up on a particular ridge above our property. And there's about three huge um, red bald spots that the Uluhe Fern has never covered. Nothing's covered it. And I'm of the mind that that thing is just peppered with lead. And, and that's really, those th that location is directly upslope or up sort of drainage way from where all of that lead was found. So. I'll dig up the pictures that, that Ken took um, with the drone, and then maybe we can attach that to a resolution. Mahalo. Yeah. Mahalo. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Barry. Uh, we'll, you guys, you'll be sticking around for our presentation later. So, Mahalo. Thank you. Um, moving on to uh, Governor's Office, we have uh, Deputy Director uh, Katie Lambert here in person. I'm going to take the mic. Hello, everyone, Chair, Board members. Sharing the governor's message, and there are uh, hard copies of the newsletter here on the table. Um, so, reflecting on the events of September, we have witnessed significant developments across our state. My administration remains dedicated to addressing our key priorities, including housing, homelessness, and health care. In this month's newsletter, you will learn about Department of Defense initiatives to support our community, the successful conclusion of the Maui Economic Recovery Commission led by the Department of Business Economic Development and tourism, and in addition, the University of Hawaii also conducted an important Maui wildfire exposure study and launched a survivor registry. We also highlighted the exceptional recipients of the Governor's Awards and our ongoing efforts to strengthen Hawaii's relationship with Japan and East tourism. Thank you everyone for your tireless work to make Hawaii better for everyone, whether they, li they live here or are just visiting. I'm honored to work alongside such talented individuals who show a deep commitment to our Ohana, Hiki, and Aina. I wish everyone a fantastic and delightfully spooky October. Um, there were some issues brought up at the last meeting that I'd like to follow up on. Um, first, um, for board member Raccoon, um, he asked DHHL to look into overgrown Albizia that is on DHHL lands near the North Oak in uh, Waiahole Valley. So DHHL staff will survey the area and plot out how many trees are on our vacant lots that need to be cut. Over the past several years, DHHL has cut down Albizia that could impact roadways and power lines, but knows there is more work to be done. Earlier this year, our Homestead Services Division and Land Development Division cut to Albizia trees, and it, it was uh, quite an expensive cost to the department. So to let you know, in um, the DHHL budget in the upcoming year, we will be asking for um, $2 million for maintenance and Waiahole is on the top of that list. There were also questions regarding the Heiakea Pier. Um, so um, uh, specifically with the wastewater treatment plant, um, Dobor's responses were that new leach fields, also known as absorption beds, have been installed but will not be placed in operation until the new wastewater treatment plant, acronym WWTP, that is, un that is currently under construction is operational. We anticipate the new WWTP to be operational by July 2025, but this is not a firm date, as operation of the new WWTP will be contingent on getting approval to use, approval to use by the system, 
excuse me, approval to use the system by Department of Health Wastewater Branch. Um, there was a concern about um, the possibility of raw sewage going into the bay. Their response was raw sewage does not enter the bay. It is held in a preloader tanks located near the conversation by camp highway that are pumped out regularly 3 to 4 times per week by certified wastewater haulers. Any sewage that isn't pumped out of the preloader tanks goes into aeration tanks for treatment. After which the treated sewage then goes into seepage pits that do not discharge directly into the bay, but rather seep into the surrounding soil. Um, pumping will not be required after the new WWTP is operational. And to be clear, um, because there is the system at the ocean end of the pier, the wastewater system at the end of the pier consists of a wet well that collects sewage from the harbor office, restaurant store, and bathrooms at the end of the pier. This wet well does not discharge any sewage into the ocean or surrounding soil. It is solid concrete. Pumps inside the wet well deliver the sewage to the preloader tanks, aeration tanks, and seepage pits described above. Uh, also, there was a concern about the number of uh, how waste sewage was being collected from first boats, private yachts, uh, et cetera, that are at the pier. So there is a vessel sewage pump out located at the end of the pier for vessels to pump sewage from their vessel holding tank to the wet well described above. The pump out station at the end of the pier is operational. The tour companies access and hook up unassisted. Other boaters um, contact harbor staff for access. So um, those were the big ones. Um, there was also a request for um, information about the governor's financial priorities that was delivered to the chair. Um, it, it's a pretty extensive, it was via link and it's um, a pretty extensive um, document um, because it does include basically the governor's fiscal year executive supplemental budget. Um, so that link is available um, and can be shared um, via means, I guess there's an issue with that. So um, other than that, if there are any other comments or questions or concerns that I can take back to the governor's office. Any question for the governor's office? I'll put that. Just want to thank you for following up on that. You did a really, really good job. Just to put it in context, we're trying to figure out where the sewage is getting into the bay from, whether it's coming from the military or from the septic tanks or from the, you know, or from the, uh, the sewage entry from Haiti up here. Um, one more easy question for next time. Tanya or Abora is doing a wonderful job as the harbor master. She has a number of positions under her which haven't been filled for more than two years. Could you give us a picture of the org chart, how many vacant positions she has, and uh, what's happening with those positions? In other words, she's, she's doing it pretty much by herself, and I think uh, she deserves help before she gives up. Thank you. I'll go down. I'll go right. Just a follow up. Um, Tanya's willing to work Saturdays, Sundays. Um, if, if we implore, employ, or implore the, um, the powers to be um, to allow her to work that some, you know, maybe every other Saturday or every other Saturday, Sunday, because then we can boss some of the shenanigans that goes on at, at the Aruolaka in terms of the um, illegal transport of people. Um, number two is if you could maybe ask DLNR to come up with a, a, a just a broad statement of how do you dispose of a boat? Now, let's say we get a hurricane blow through here. We're going to have hundreds of boats on shore. We had a heck of a time getting rid of someone that, that abandoned a boat in the parks parking lot. I got rid of the trailer in the metal bin and then um, we had a heck of a time we had to get a private um, um, trash bin to be able to trash. But Really, we need to understand, or they, DLNR needs to, the voting division needs to direct um, the public how to dispose of a vote. What's the proper protocol, process, whatever. Mahalo. Atiwaki. Uh, mahalo for your presentation. But I have to, so, but Rick is talking about with Tanya. She is doing a really good job. And Tanya asked me, because we were concerned, why don't I go meet with the harvest person, which I did. I did meet with um, Megan Stats, <clears throat> and she said it's not up to them. They don't do the hours. They, they don't. They cannot adjust the hours because Tanya is willing to work on weekends. You know, alter their days off. And Megan said it was up to the union 
So we brought it up into your know, land board meeting, and sometimes we didn't get a direct um, solution for that. So can the governor look into that? Because we need people there on weekends, and if the, if your uh, administration is willing to do it, why not? Uh, another thing I was looking into is that, not to gumbo, but I have a handicap sticker. Doesn't matter. I pay. I pay my um, my media, my my my. But every time I go to hearings, and this is the state capitol, and the Department of Land and Natural Resource building, where I've been getting tickets, and I'm bringing it up because today I met somebody from Kahana Valley, another Kapuna that went. She said I was trying to rush because my meter. I had so many tickets from DLN are going to hearings, and it's forty two dollars automatic. And the Kupuna is on set budgets. And if we they are volunteering our times to go to hearings, I don't think it's fair. It's because the way the meter is, is you gotta put in your card or your money for two hours. Okay, sometimes the hearings just about you ready to talk in the hearings, you, you can't run down to put the money in your meter. Do something with the meter or do something about this. We're willing to pay it, but not pay the tickets all the time. Mahalo. Mahalo oh, Tiraki. John. Katie, my, my dad had a, a little sign on the wall that my brother made. Be the job great or be the job small. And if you do it too well, you get stuck with it all. So just wanted to let you know you did such a good job. Now we're gonna come at you with more questions. <laughs> um but uh thanks thanks for your report. Um glad to hear about Alvisia being put into the budget for the coming year. That's really, really important. There are those there are a couple of lots up there that have huge Alvisia. Um, I think that working closely with the uh, Kola Mountain Watershed Partnership folks, um, some of those that are more interior that are not what they call hazard trees, if you fall on a line or fall on a road or a car or a house, um, can be dealt with with milestone with a uh, herbicide that, that um, they have been teaching people how to use. And, you know, we're happy as a valley, people in the valley, to come together, work with the HHL folks, and do that kind of eradication. That would be really great. Um, also, there's a lot going on in bio. Okay? So I look forward in the coming year to collaboration between and among agencies in the Valley. There's so much to be done. Agribusiness Development Corporation of Malka is coming into full ownership of the Waiholi Ditch. Uh, our Waiholi Katesuki's hearings made sure they know that they don't own the water in the ditch, they only own the ditch. Um, but I mean, that's really critical because they have roadways that need to be maintained to get up to the ditch tunnel. Later on, we're going to be touching on uh, the idea. Amy Lewis and will be speaking about hydroelectric power that we're kind of wanting to explore. Um, so we want to work closely with, with the governor's office to get those different agencies together. Because when they're working together, they're so much stronger. The valley is going to be so much stronger and able to deal with the, the many issues that, that we're up against. Lots going on there. So, mahalo. Mahalo, Uncle John. Uh, anyone online? Questions? The governor's office. Oh, yeah, Joe, in person, go ahead. Aloha, um, my name is Joe Watt. Um, I'm a resident over here in Kalaia. I was wondering if we could get um, an update on the Department of Agriculture's plan to spend the $10 million biosecurity allocation from this past year. Uh, I have been working with a lot of people to try and manage little fire ants over here in this area, but all of the partner organizations that I've been working with told me that they are uh, receiving less funding this year than they have in the past. And so for me, that's challenging to see such a legislative success in terms of um, dedicated biosecurity money and then a, such a drastic shift of resources away from what is accessible to me as a community member. Um, so I would love to Find out more about that so that we can better prepare for this coming lunch session. Thank you. Apologize. Um, anyone else online in person? Questions for the governor's office. Okay, seeing none. Thank you, Katie. Appreciate your time. Mahalo. Moving on to Senator Brenton Owa's office. Anyone online? Hey, there's Elizabeth. Okay, go ahead, Elizabeth. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. All good. Go ahead. Um, hi, neighborhood board chair members and members of the community. My name is Elizabeth and I'll be giving this month's report on behalf of Senator Awa. Um, as Senator Awa had mentioned last month when he showed up in person, 
um, down the road, Kabul Beach Park, we had sent in our application uh, to adopt the Kabul Beach Park, and it's still under review by the city's Department of Parks and Recreation. We expect further updates from them, including insights from a similar major cleanup and maintenance project that they recently had completed back um, in Pearl Harbor, which mirrors the efforts uh, that Senator Wa aims to kind of undertake at Kahu Beach Park. Um, speaking of major cleanup, um, we had received numerous complaints um, regarding the Kahu Stream Canal uh, maintenance that's the city. So we also had reached out to uh, Matt Wire's office as well, but also to um, facility and maintenance. Um, sent them pictures, told them around that location behind Heo Place specifically. I uh, explained to them that the canal is overgrown with vegetation. Trying to see it off the record, they kind of was just sharing with us that they just don't have the manpower like they used to. But they're gonna, we're still waiting an official response from them. Um, so yeah, nothing from them yet. Hopefully, we can probably get something from. Uh, Council Member Wire's office soon, but another initiative that we are or have been working on, which kind of affects the entire state, including Kahalu, um, addressing our homeless or houseless Ohana. Earlier this earlier this past legislative session, Senator Awa had helped pass the Return to Home Bill. Um, this legislation this legislation kind of provides supports to the individuals experiencing homelessness, but helping them get off the streets access necessary services, but more importantly, eventually helping them to get back home where they came from. Um, and this is kind of targeting a lot of our mainland Ohana that are not originally from Hawaii. Um, but if anyone in the board or in the community has information on anyone specific, we've been working on, we've been working with individual, houseless individuals together, as well as their case managers to kind of get the process started um and eventually get to that end goal um but yeah short report today um that concludes the updates and i'd be happy to take back any questions or concerns but i did have a question earlier in the mayor's report um you mentioned might have been john the uh, working with dot trying to get a tractor is it is it where exactly is that um why holy on the highway my is that where it is yeah, Elizabeth, if I could clarify. So what we were talking about was a, um, a tractor with a mower attachment, articulated arm a um, off of the side of the mower. Okay. And, and what's most important about that conversation is the collaboration that could and should be happening between the state and the county. Sharing, uh, sharing that kind of equipment, pretty expensive. Um, they both work out of the base yard by King Intermediate, uh, potentially, and, you know, so... Um, we don't care who owns the highway. We care about the collaboration that keeps the grass down so that uh, visibility is really good all along Kamehameha Highway, whether it's city or state owned. So yeah, that's that's the tenor of that conversation. Mahalo. Got it. Totally agree. Uh, we have a we have a list of updates that we're um, waiting on from DOT. I'm going to include this into the list that hopefully we can get back by the end of this week or no later than next week. Okay, great. Can I, Parker can I ask one more thing. So, so since you got a list going, um, add to the list the, uh, the proximity of vendors that are currently operating in and around the uh, intersection of Kaikili and Kamehameha Highway and the, the new roundabout. Um, you know, they look good, but in the wrong place, very dangerous ingress and egress issues there. So, if you could add that, um, I don't know where they can go, but Rick, Rick and I have been talking about the idea of. The, the mud bog area between Kaikili and O'Connor Road. Um, that's a again a joint county on O'Connor Road and state on Kaikili. Maybe we need an area where vending can take place. It's better to legalize something and and, and manage it than to be uh, chasing outlaws. Got it. Thank you, John. Got it. I added that to the list. Um, yeah, and we'll have an update. Appreciate it, Elizabeth. Thanks, Uncle John. Um, and then we had Dave online. You had a question? Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Loud and clear. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Hi. Dave Monix from uh, over here in uh, Kahalu. Um, 
Uh, I, we've been feeding the homeless for 13 years. And I just a couple of things there that hit my ear. Um, the majority of homeless, 95% are from Hawaii. And 70% are working families. 30% are children. 50% um, are Kanaka Maoli. Um, so uh, the two big problems for homelessness here in Hawaii is uh, we have the highest rents and the lowest pay. And those are why we have this huge homeless problem in Hawaii. In fact, across the country now, it's becoming a growing problem. So um, it's important to focus on what the real problem is. We have, these folks who are homeless are victims. They have nowhere else to go. And if they had somewhere else to go, they would go there. But if you uh, are living paycheck to paycheck, which most people are here in Hawaii, um, and you, you know, you get hit with um, multiple uh, expenses you're not expecting, like you've got the car breaks down, you got medical bills, then suddenly you can't pay your rent. And once you're out, you have to have three times what you had monthly than you had before. And no one has that kind of money. So that's why I have a growing problem here. And so I just want people to be aware of that because there's a lot of misinformation spread by government agencies that are absolutely not provably not true. So uh, just thank you. I want to let you know that. And um, you guys are doing a great job. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, Dave. Mahalo for your words. Uh, Marie? Uh, in conjunction with that, but more with the other aspects um, regarding uh, responses uh, and availability of uh, machinery and what have you, uh, how much of all of this is coordinated with uh, DEM? in the event of uh, an emergency man-made or natural? Or how much are you working at coordination of that? Thank you. Appreciate it, Marie. Um, all right, you good. Yeah, no more questions online. No more questions in person. Um, appreciate it, Elizabeth. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Board. We'll see you next month. Actually, yeah. Yeah, next month will um, be our last meeting of the year. Parker, the yep. gentleman's name who spoke on homelessness. Can you? I can't read it from here. Oh, uh, Dave Mullenix. Mullenix. M U L I N I X. Yeah, no. Um, okay, moving on. We're going to go to Representative Lisa Kitagawa's office. We have Wendy online. Hi, Wendy. Hi, everyone. Um, Wendy here from Rep Kitagawa's office. Uh, what we're working right now on is um, looking at different ideas for bills. So I know last time there was a comment about if Rep. Kinagawa would sponsor a cesspool bill. And um, she's definitely open to talking about it. Uh, so if you have any other ideas, just let us know. Okay, Mahalo. Any uh, questions for Rep. Kinagawa's office? Uncle John? Could you recap that question? I couldn't understand. Oh, I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question? Oh, I'm sorry. You can paraphrase. Sorry. Could you, could you, Wendy, could you restate what you had said one more time? Oh, I just said that we were um, looking at bills for the next session. And if anybody had any other ideas, um, just contact our office. I know last time there was an ask if she would sponsor a cesspool reimbursement, a cesspool conversion reimbursement bill. Um, I did let her know about that request. And I also let her know um, that you asked if she could come to your meetings with um, the state energy office, I believe, with Gwen, the one about the cesspools. Right on. Okay. Uh, thank you. We'll go ahead. Yeah. Uncle Rick, you want to say something? Wendy, could you stick around for the community concerns portion? Because I have something that you might be, um, um, representatives um, might be able to help out with. Mahalo. Okay. Thanks, Wendy. Appreciate it. Thanks, Uncle Rick. Um, okay, yeah, we'll be sure to send over any ideas or any draft legislation that we have over to, um, uh, to you folks in Rep. Kitagawa's office. Mahalo. Um, okay, we're going to move on to Wimmer Community College. We have Chancellor Artis Eschenberg online. There's Artis. Hi, Chancellor. Thank you for having me tonight. I have three quick things. The first is I'm super proud. We just graduated nine women at the Women's Community Correctional Center. Eight, all nine finished a certificate in mental health technician, and one completed her AA, which is the 
first associate's degree that we've granted to a student while they were still inside. We've granted a few after they've been released, but it was our first AA inside, so it was really exciting. Um, of course, there's always a double edge with prison education because you wish it didn't have to happen, but we're, we're excited that we were able to do this work. And related to that, we're intending hopefully in the spring to start a program for our men who are at the private facility in Arizona. We have over 500 men from Hawaii who are incarcerated in the middle of the desert that we hope to begin an online AA at Hawaiian Studies to help them keep their connection to Hawaii while they're there. My um, second piece of information is I got to meet with the neighborhood board's very own Ken today and we talk story about um, resiliency, building up the community. Uh, we looked at some FEMA resources and I believe the infrastructure committee will be reaching out to Dottie Kelly Paddock, who we also work with in Haula and who has built up a lot of infrastructure and planning within Haula over the same kinds of topics. So I just wanted to shout out Ken and thank the neighborhood board for this continued partnership, which enriches our work at the community college. And I think I had a third piece, but I forgot it already. So that's great. Thank you guys um, and have a great next month. Unless you have questions, of course. Are there any questions for Chancellor? Yeah, Auntie Rocky, go ahead. I just want to say something. I saw that graduation on TV. I saw them announcing it, and I was so proud of Winter Community College. Good job. Mahalo. Thanks, Auntie Rocky. Yeah, this was, we've been there since 2017, and it's really, it was, we're the only UH institution offering college degrees inside. Uh, Chaminade also offers degrees at one of the facilities. So it's a, it's, um, Beautiful and difficult work. And the students there are amazing. Our teachers compare them to graduate students with their level of focus and concentration. Good job. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thanks, Andrew Rockley. All right. Thanks, Chancellor. Appreciate your time. Mahalo. Have a great night. Um, okay. Uh, moving on to Connor Bay Regional Council. Uncle Cliff, any reports? Yeah. Uh, Last week we had a meeting down at the pier as with the Makai Watch. We used, and then we identified a, what do you call that? A commercial without permit operator in a bay. But there's a bunch of them running around in a bay that already had been served notice. But the question I asked, you know, with all, all these fines that they, they find the, well, I don't know if they do. They say they find the, the people, you know, I don't know where the money goes. You know, they always say no more money, no more money, but I don't know what they do with them. But we don't have that much in stock, guys. That's all. Mahalo. Thank you, Cliff. Any questions for the Conway Bay Regional Council? Yeah. Um, yeah, Kevin, go ahead. When, are, are the are the meetings for the Makai Watch regularly scheduled, like the same day every month? No, it's, it's not a regular. It's, you know, when they have something really important, sometimes stretch out about every other month, sometimes every month, you know, depends on who, who everybody feels. We just go with the weather. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to know because I wanted, I was thinking about trying to help with that whenever I can as well. So I'll, I'll find that information out. Thank you. Right on, Keone, thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, let's see. Any other questions for the Connecticut Bay Regional Council? In person, online. Yeah, thanks, Cliff, appreciate it. Uh, moving on to Rep Jill Takuda's office. Anyone from Rep Takuda's office online? Okay, seeing none, we're going to go ahead and move on. We have the Cunningham Marine Corps base. We have Christy here in person. Let's see, Christy. Good evening, Chair, members, and community. I have a few updates of some events that are in the works and planning. Um, but before I forget, Keone, I think I can share some information with you. 
um, and, and Uncle Clifford, there is an email. I'll have um, Casey get you on the email list to let you know when the next Makai watch is, okay? Right on, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I do think it is every other month. I think it gets postponed when too many of the people can't make it. Yes, and then that would extend it. Um, I'm on those emails and I try to go when I can. Um, so a couple of the things coming up in the next couple of months, we're planning for Makahiki. And I wanted to reach out to Ian. I saw him online to see if he would help us to coordinate the lifeguards for Makahiki like we did. So I see you shaking your head. Thank you. Um, I've also been talking with Bonnie Kahapea, so she'll be assisting. And Donnie, um, who organizes and leads it for the Marine Corps base, is um, already in the loop as well. Um, we're also going to be hosting the Special Olympics, their holiday special during November. And that same exact weekend, we'll be hosting um, uh, Hokolea coming into the Windward side. and. Um, if you've been hearing, I know Auntie Rocky has been talking about um, Pukulea docking at Heia and for the community here to be able to come out to support and show um, our gratitude for all of her work. So there's, I'm coordinating with all of them. We're all, we're all working together. This is the community working together, but we will be hosting her at Mokapu and we'll be also be able to support some of the other schools that don't have, you know, Kailua doesn't have a doc, so we'll be able to support by having some of those elementary schools and intermediate school come on to the base to participate. Uh, I think that's all I have right now. Um, and just to follow up um, on the wastewater, um, they tell me every month if there has been exceedance and there has not been in the last four to six weeks. Mahalo, Auntie Christy. Uh, Ian had a question here online. Go ahead, brother. Uh, hi, Christy. Thanks so much. I'd be happy to help with uh, Makahiki, and I'll talk with Clark about that. Um, see who I can have jump on. Actually, I'm also going to put out a plug real quick for DOE High School Surfing Club. So we are making a big effort this year and have brought a lot of new high schools in to 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 try and get OIA status and get funding and everything. I know two of the coaches, I think one from Le Jardin um, and, and others from the, the HASA, the Hawaii Amateur Surfing Association, ha, may be approaching you to request uh, having a surfing contest out there at Pyramid Rock in February. Please uh, uh, consider doing that for the community. I know there's a lot of excitement about that and, and hopes that we'll do that. And, of course, I'm there to help out not only as a new Kalaheo High School surf coach, but also um, in in my in my job out there. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, let's get yeah. that. My first contest yeah. is at Pyramid Rock. I, I did yeah. get that request. I did get that paperwork, and we are working it. Of course, you know that we have to send it up to legal first, um, and then of we'll course. see where where it goes from there. Okay, just throwing in my support and um, yeah, we have Kamakao and we have Kailua and we have Kala Hill and um, many schools right now jumping in. So thanks for helping your community with that. Ian, I'll shoot you an email. Maybe we can connect sometime and you can fill me in just a little bit more about that, sir. I'd like to hear from that, the personal side of it. Awesome, I just couldn't make that drop in visit that they did. So. Um, um happy to discuss that with you anytime, Christy. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Right Thank you, Ian. Um, any other questions for the Marine Corps base and Auntie Christy? Anyone in person? Anyone online? All right, thanks, Auntie Christy. Appreciate it. All right. Um, moving on to community topics. Uh, we do have the Red Hill Water Spill Movement presentation that um, Melody wanted to go ahead and give out. And so for the members here in person, we did have two handouts go around. Uh, the first one I think was a handout that Melody brought with her, and that was a map, a blown up map. And then the second one that you guys got was a presentation that Melody had sent me, um, basically containing the same map and then some slides that um, Border Water Supply put together in relation to this um, this event. And so um, without further ado, Melody, go ahead. Thank you very much, Chair. My name again is Melody Aduha, and I am a member of the CRI, 
which is the community representation initiative under the 2023 uh, EPA consent um, administrative order of consent regarding Red Hill. And I'm also the chair of the environment or co-chair of the environmental caucus. Okay, so the, my presentation today is with regards to the plume that has collected as a result of the spills at Red Hill. Now, we don't know the extent of the contamination. We don't know the extent of the plume. We do know, however, that the, on May 6, 2021, 19,000 gallons of jet fuel JP5 was spilled. On November 2021, also a spill, November 20th, 20,000 gallons were, were then released for a total amount of 39,000 gallons. And so now what, what do we do? This is three years ago. Um, that many gallons have been released in May, as I said, 19,000 gallons. Only 1,580 gallons has been recovered. The November 2021 spill, 20,000 gallons were spilled, and we have no idea how much, if any, were recovered. The Navy has not given us that information. So today, what I want to talk about is a detection of PAHs, polycyclic anaerobic uh, hydrocarbons, if I said that right, in the IA well. The initial detection was on May 13, 2024. So that means it has traveled, this plume has traveled uh, in the last uh, two years, three years, uh, just about two miles in that many, that time frame. So on May 13, 2024 was the first detection of the PAHs. On June 4th, 2024, uh, again, another detection uh, of this PAH. Now, what is this PAH? Well, there are short-term health effects, such as skin irritation, respiratory issues, but there are also long-term health effects, such as cancer, organ damage, reproductive and developmental effects, immune system effects, cardiovascular disease, neurological effects as well. Now, okay, so it was detected in the IA well, but there is not, if you, we should look on the map and, um, if you could see the IA well is on the top, the top left hand side of the map. And that is where the PAH was detected. Now, if you could see the Ka'amila well, the Ka'amila well is not that far from the IA well. And maybe if you see the circular is the Aloha Stadium to so give you some uh, perspective. And so the Ka'amila well is an active border water supply well and a million gallons is currently being drawn out of that well to serve IAEA as well as um, the Halava area. And if you, when you look at this map, you will see, the Navy will say, well, they've got 40 monitoring wells. Their monitoring wells are in yellow. If you look at the yellow dots, you see the yellow outline, that is Red Hill. That is the Navy's property. And there's some, a rows of blue dots, that's the Red Hill, well, underground fuel storage facility. So you can see that around the Red Hill facility, there are these monitoring wells that the Navy monitors bi-weekly uh, to, to determine whether the contaminants have spread. But when you look at the IA well on the top left-hand corner area, there aren't any monitoring wells by the Navy. <laughs> and and if you look down below IA well, and you'll see NMW24, that is a Navy monitoring well, and they themselves have also detected PAHs in that well. Okay, so the concern now that the Board of Water Supply has is that the movement appears to be going westward, and there are no monitoring wells westward. So it, it's a hit or miss. Is, is the plume going to be moving towards the Ka'amila well, putting all those people in jeopardy? As I said before, so 1 million gallons of drinking water daily serves the IEA and Halava uh, community. And monitoring is what needs to be done, and that is what we don't have. Now, the Board of Water Supply plans to construct 100 new monitoring wells around or beyond IAEA. 
each well, however, has a cost of $3 million to construct. So there's all these difficulties. There's technical difficulties. There's complex drilling, installation process, cross-contamination issues. There's also environmental factors, the hydrology of the area. And Rick Cowell would know about that. <laughs> yeah, and the soil and the rock formation. Then there's also regulatory compliance permits as well as environmental regulations has to all be met. And as I had mentioned before, the cost allocation of $3 million per well, that covers the drilling equipment and ongoing monitoring. Now, who should pay for that? <laughs> That's the problem. So the Y report, which is the Red Hill Water Alliance Initiative Y report led by Representative Linda Ichiyama, that uh, report recommends the construction of 122 monitoring wells. And it also calls for federal funding in the amount of $750 million. The Board of Water Supply has filed uh, a claim, $1.2 billion claim against the Department of Defense under the Federal Tort Claims Act. And uh, uh, apparently the Navy has not responded. So the Board of Water Supply may have to proceed with a federal lawsuit in order to recover their losses. Uh, as they project it to be at 1.2 million. Okay, the November 2021 spill, um, November 20th, 20,000 gallons. And I think you folks have heard that 93 people were affected as a result, right? Those that are, are on the uh, Red Hill line. The Red Hill line has been closed, thank goodness, um, by the Navy. And it's now totally from the Waiava well is um, how they're supplying their water. Okay, so Navy Closure Task Force, Red Hill, uh, they're overseeing the decommissioning of the Red Hill facility. And um, as I had mentioned, 40 groundwater monitoring wells, which is insufficient. And the Navy is also um, cleaning up the tanks and pipelines, and they've created what is they call the Water Quality Action Team. So, <laughs> did I make the 10 minutes? Okay. Oh, you're not talking. Okay. Well, I'm I'm available for questions. Okay. Molinary for your presentation. Uncle Dan, go ahead. Fascinating report. I appreciate your giving it to us. What can we do about that? Why are you giving us that report? In other words, you know, we have to have the community has to be made aware I mean, everywhere. The whole island is affected by this, although we are not immediately affected. The waterways are all interconnected. Yeah, I understand that, but why would this neighborhood board have any influence on the United States Navy? We we can barely get them to report sewage spills here. I'm I'm am not, you know, I'm just asking you, you know, a question. What do you what do you think we should do about that? I think we need to write to Brian Schatz. And you know, we need to write to our congressional delegation. They're pretty much the only Right, Jill Takuda and Ed Case and Maisie Rono, they're the ones that are going to be able to push the needle. Every board has to write. Oh, any other questions here, person? Uncle Cliff. That's why it's important. Go ahead. Uncle Cliff, go ahead. Okay. So they're not pumping from that well, the one at uh, that Red Hill one. So the people in Monolua Valley. Their water is coming from where? The Kaamila well. So, so, that, so that the water to the back tracking them coming back to Mauna Loa, yeah? Yeah. So the water That's is right. the whole the whole pot is contaminated. The whole under aquifer is all contaminated. No matter which way you're gonna look at it. Because now they're pumping uh, air. Yeah, no. call me. No, IAEA is closed. That's it's where closed? they, that's where they the found, yes, they okay. found the PAHs at the IAEA well. IAEA, Halava well, and Halava shaft was closed. Okay, so. Closed and probably will not be reopened. So now they're sucking out from that Kaomir one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all the contaminants from Red Hill is moving down as they're sucking them out. Right? The groundwater is movement. Is moving. Yeah, yeah. So. 
and I can tell you, I, I didn't want to mention it earlier, but the IAOL had the PAH, that's the detection in, in May and June. It's no longer there. There's no more detection. So it's moved. The plume has moved. But wow. we have no monitoring wells beyond beyond the IA well to determine where it's actually going. So no wonder they was they putting in bigger pipes at our pump down here. They will feed them the our water. It will steal our water. Oh, okay. That's why we all got it right. Uncle John. Yeah, thanks, Melody, for, for uh, bringing this back in front of us. You know, it has been in front of us for 40 years. You know, we've known this is gonna, gonna, gonna whack us over the head. Um, I think it's really important. Uh, you know, back back in the day when we were fighting for our windward water resources, keeping water in the streams and so on, whether it was Waihe'e here in Waihe'e or or the Waiholi Katesa case hearings, you know, um, we we urged the rest of the island use the water resources you have the, in your own area. You know, uh, things like uh, effluent, treat it, all of that. You know, whatever is practicable. Um, this whole situation really undermines um, our, our water system for the whole island. Um, and I, you know, Barry, Barry, we've had lots of discussions about this too, but um, you know, we're not isolated. Um, having sat on the Board of Water Supply Stakeholders Advisory Group um, for I don't know, four or five years, it seems like now, um, it's a great, it's a great uh, venue for hearing about issues like this, by the way. A meeting coming up, I think, on October 17th in town. But um, it's really important. It's be, it has become very clear to me that uh, no man is an island. We are, we are, we have a one, we have one water resource in a sense. Um, you know, it may be divided into different aquifers, uh, different sections, but the hydrology is such that it's not an it's not an exact science. Where water is moving, you know, is becoming an even more critical question. So. Yeah, as water is being shut off in one section and being drawn to another section, maybe those plumes are moving. So, what does this mean for our side? Um, with it, with an island-wide water system that the Board of Water Supply has has pushed for, rightfully so. Um, at some point, they're going to come after the cleanest water possible. So we we absolutely have to pay attention to this. I think, you know, like I've said with other you know other issues, it's time for our neighborhood board. To maybe uh, set aside certain meetings for issues like this, a whole meeting, bring in all the resource people that we need to. Um, it's also time for all neighborhood boards on the island to come together around uh, resolutions, lobbying our congressional representatives, right on federal, state, county levels of representation. Um, we have to get behind this. Um, Daniel is pretty pessimistic about. Getting the Navy to do anything, but hey, all of these military leases, right, uh, Christy? These leases are all coming up. Leases for use of land that the military has under their feet in year 2029. This is the best time to have that kind of leverage. Um, so yeah, we, we need to we need to be um, together on these kinds of issues. And I think, I mean, is there? I'm going to ask you, Melody, but also uh, Barry, Board of Water Supply. Is there a general resolution that a neighborhood board can can pass that would be, um, you know, in, in unison with all other neighborhood boards on the island? We're pretty unique on Oahu in that we have a neighborhood board system. It covers the entire island, so that's the kind of guidance we're looking for. We don't necessarily have to do that tonight, but we need to do it soon. Um, so thanks. I do know, just to hit your point, um, Uncle John. Um, you know, a frequent member of our meetings is um, Donald Sakamoto, member of Kanye Board. And so I'm sure we can work with him to get something at least going as as far as Koala Poco. Right? We will work with Waimanalo, work with Kanye. Um, we can get that done. That's good. And then I would be willing to share it with the other neighborhood boards as well. Yeah. Right. I'll go, I just want to go through one more thing, though, the graph. Right? Go through the graph. Sure. And I just wanted so that you could understand. Sure. And know, then we could talk about it. Sure. The important part, I guess, is the one that's already outlined in yellow. But if you look at the very right column, and it's that stands for Department of Health Drinking Water Action Limit. So that indicates what is allowable, and if it goes beyond that amount, then we're in trouble. 
So that's how you read it. So like take, for example, the first one, the um, action level is 0 0.052, but the IAOL was showing 0 0.2. So that's quite significant. And if you go to the um, R, it says RHMW02, that's Red Hill Monitoring Well 2, it also shows, and that's Navy, so that also shows that they have a PAH is found. And that's also, um, I did highlight it on the, on the graph, or on the, on the map. <laughs> oh, mahalo. Thank you. Thank you for that breakdown. I'll go right. So a couple of things, Melody, thank you so much for coming tonight and um, sharing with this. Um, those two um, Navy monitoring wells that are adjacent to the freeway, I guess that would be as you're going up over, um, Trying to get my bearings, I guess, down from, from the hospital. Um, or is that, Barry, is that information that is gathered from those monitoring wells, is that provided to BWS or you guys are abreast of it? Thank you, Rick, for the question. Um, I, be I believe the Navy um monitors those wells and the results are submitted to the department of health and and then the board of water supply obtains that data from the department of health and, and then regard thank you barry and then regarding um senator shots chair maybe you might as chair of our board reach out to senator shots's office and just give him a schedule of our meeting dates and say when you're in town next if one of these we would really appreciate you coming in person and then Melody, you could share the report and then he could hear firsthand. I mean, sometimes on paper or in an email is not as um, effective as seeing eye to eye. And Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo. Uh, Atira, what's on to say? Mahalo for your presentation. That was a good presentation. Um, I agree with John. I remember when they built, we had streams running in here, Kia. And I was young, and all of a sudden, when they built Kaikili Highway, we no longer have any streams at all in the whole valley. And that's what happened to it. But um, are you asking us to advocate for us to um, talk to our elected officials for more funding to put in monitoring stations? Is that what you're asking of us? Yes, that's correct. Okay, that's a, that's a good question. Another thing is, I go to Halava at least twice a month, and I see uh, Menahuniwara. Where they're bottling up right there. Where are they getting the water from? Are we? Are you buying Manhuni water? Is it coming from there? Another thing is that when I go to Moanalua, um, Kaiser, a whole big construction. They're building new houses. The military. Are they, is the water? Con, is that water going to be contaminated? And why are the funding going to build all of these houses? when on the other side of the hill, there's empty houses. That's another thing we can question our elected officials with. And building, I don't see why the city or the state should give out more permits to build more houses if the water is not enough water. And we got to be really careful with our water here, because John is right. Next thing to be taking our water. Hello. Yeah, I agree. I think they're going to come Windward side first. Well, uh, Marie, online. Thank you, Chair. I had a barking dog. Um, a lot of what you're talking about is uh, going on in discussions with a variety of agencies, state um, and county and independent uh, organizations. And it is really, 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 really time for uh, somebody, um, along with the push from the neighborhood boards, to uh, coordinate um, or at least make everybody aware of everything that is um, going on um, to try and address, uh, respond to, and prevent many of these uh, concerns that, that have been brought up. So I really hope that um, our board will get on board. Um, Connie always started. Um, and, but it, it needs the pressure from the community to uh, progress in the areas that you've been discussing almost all night long. Thank you. Hello, Marie. Any other comments, questions, concerns, Uncle John? Um, Board of Water Supply 
planning, uh, like other county uh, level planning, you know, Maui, we got and so on, all fees up towards the state water plan. I would like to know where the State Commission of Water Resource Management is on this. I think we need to hear more from them. They're really, they're really the uh, the top level statewide as far as as far as uh, water quality, water resource management. Again, so that and the chair of that, of course, is uh, the head of DLNR, Don Chang. Um, so I, I think maybe, maybe we should be looking at a meeting where we ask the Water Commission, Don Chang yourself, others in the Water Commission, be or the other, always. Um, uh, represented uh, slot on the Water Commission is the State Department of Health. They need to be front and center. We need to, we need to hear from them too. Now, if every neighborhood board was asking for these folks to be present at their meetings, they would be overwhelmed. Um, this is a time when I think maybe all of our football from Manalo through through uh, our neighborhood board, or maybe even pull up. You know, we we call for those kinds of meetings. Um, at places like with the community college and, and to make them bigger, more convenient, uh, both uh, in person and virtual so that those folks can be present, make it convenient because this is a roadmap. We need to know this roadmap. We need those who are at points on the roadmap to be present. Small up a dunk of coal. Matt, you okay? Go ahead. I have something to say. I've been going to some of these meetings and I got turned off because we're always the victim. You know, oh, we got to hear everybody's testimony from all over the all over the mainland. But and I always say I'll go to the next meeting when we have solutions. And this meeting is talking about solutions. And one of the things that John talked about is Don Chang with the Water Commission. Okay, the Water Commission seat has not been filled yet. Okay, before there's two names before the governor, and I don't know when the governor is gonna. You know, there's no excuse that it should be empty. We need those seats filled. And there's two people right now that is very capable with the right qualifications. And I'm, you can take that back to the governor. He should get somebody on that board and we should meet together because I like the idea of finding solutions. We're, we're not victims anymore. Let's work together and get a solution for our water. Mahalo. Mahalo, Tiaki, Paco. Any, uh, Barry, did you have something you want to say? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, uh... <clears throat> Thank you for Melody uh, for for bringing this up and making that presentation. Um, oh, there's a lot to unpack there, man. Um, I I think you know if it wasn't for the advocacy of and, and you know of our manager and chief engineer Eddie Lau from you know like pointing these potential impacts out back in 2014 when the spill happened, and then fast forward to now. Um, the amount of work and advocacy and uh, community building and stuff, <clears throat> and of course it, it, you know, about the potential impacts of you know a, a big spill like that. And sure enough, in 2021 it happened. And you know, if it wasn't for that, I think you know the Navy would not have made the decision um, uh, to defuel, uh, you know, the Red Hill fuel tanks. Um, you know, a lot of the elected officials, including our congressional delegation, have been, um, you know, all support that. Um, you know, we live on an island. It's it's a um, limited resource. Um, <clears throat> now that they have you know, made the decision to defuel, uh, it's it's really about well, what are you going to do about all the contamination that has happened? And I think that's that's where you know a lot of our our focus, you know, has been. I'm not, you know, should be. I haven't been, you know, totally involved. Um, you know, certainly been monitoring it. Um, a couple of things that were said. Um, I would encourage uh, the, the community and the board, the neighborhood board, and the community. Uh, go to our our website, boardofwatersupply.com. We have a Red Hill presentation just about every month. It's it's on video. They talked about the the, the PAH, which is um, all the ar aromatic hydrocarbons, and the 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 um, the one test results that we found at IA wells. Even though those wells are not, and I repeat, not being pumped, they're not going into the system, but we monitor them anyway. 
after the spill in 2021, we, 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 our manager uh, decided to shut down three wells. And I have a map if you want me to show it, I, I can actually show that. Uh, we shut down Halava Chef, Halava Wells, and IL Wells. Um, but we continue to monitor and test those wells um, because we want to understand where that blue is, you know, because we know it is is there. And, um, you know, um, and then to the point of what the neighborhood board can do, the advocacy, um, you know, unfortunately, I mean, the military keeps us safe, you know, but in, 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 in doing so, there, there are these activities that can contaminate, you know, the environment. Uh, to 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 John's point earlier about you know the the um, the World War Two um, you know uh, 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 firing range <laughs> of Kala uh, and and some of that lead contaminants have you know leached back into the Waihei of uh, uh, as well as um, you know they they found lead and and uh, RDX and uh, arsenic as well and you know that's that needs to be cleaned up so understanding where those plumes are um and uh remediating them not just talking about it uh you know and prioritizing that and that's what i think the neighbor report can do is at least you know um, make those position statements known to our congressionals um, they are very aware of it, um, but, you know, additional uh, concerns would always help, you know, potentially moving that needle. Um, relative to IA wells in the PAH, again, those wells are offline. We're not, we're not pumping them. There is a concern that it may move to Kaamilo, but so far we have not picked up anything there. Uh, Moana Lua is not on the same system. <coughs> IA wells, <coughs> Kalamila wells actually serves just the IA area from, you know, Pro, Pro City Kai up, up um, above IA High School in that area does not get to town, uh, different water system. To that end, um, to be proactive, uh, our board has <coughs> um, allocated $5 million to um, uh, uh, secure a portable treatment system that would that we could use for Kamila well should it be needed. Uh, so we're actively working on that. The lot and switching to the Water Commission. If you go to their website, they have <clears throat> had numerous um, presentations because you know they're most of all most people think Water Commission is water quantity, but in in the state water code, it it, it they have a water quality mandate as well. I mean, it's certainly primarily with the Department of Health, but Water Commission has that as well. Uh, and I think the uh, August or September Water Commission, the Navy did make a presentation on their modeling, the groundwater modeling on where those contaminants may be moving toward. I encourage you folks to look at that and review that. Um, so Commission and, uh, you know, the Water Water Supply and DOH and EPA are, you know, uh, actively on a lot of these facets is very complex, but the but the um, the good point is that yeah they de they they defield um, they will clean it up and then now we want them to uh, remediate the the aquifer they need to we also advocating that they install more monitor wells to Melody's point and test them more frequently and you know we have monitor wells in our capital improvement program but we're not able to. You know, get them in place. They're pretty expensive, like his ability was saying. We intend to get there. We want to know where it is. We want to know what what uh, in proximity to the wells. We are looking at uh, treatment because um, it's not going to go into our system unless we verify that it's safe. In coordination with the Department of Health. So just wanted to make those points, Chair. Um, and um, I think that's about all the main points that I think I can think of to to the to answer um, the, the questions that have been posed. Oh, by the way, and windward water is gonna stay windward because we had we have barely enough for windward. I'm still trying to get the the uh, uh, cutting marine base to cut back. Uh, they have, 
uh, but they need to, to bring their recycled water back, system back online to irrigate the golf courses. Right now, it's potable water that's doing that. It's going to take some years, but we, may, we, we, we continue to send them quarterly um, letters on um, how they're doing in terms of water use. Um, but there's, uh, you know, no way, in, if, if, if you folks fear that a winter water going to come to town, it's not. There's not enough for inward right now. So uh, that's our current status um, available to answer any questions. Uh, but thank you for bringing up this important point, uh, Chair and Melody. Um, you know, it really needs to be discussed. So thank you. Thank you. Mahalo, Barry. Mahalo, Melody, for your presentation. Um, one thing I'd like to request, Barry, if you could give me uh, just rough estimates of the uh, estimated costs approximately per system. Right, that's what I would need something from you. If, if, if anything from B, BWS, um, that would be appreciated. And then if we have Wendy, if you're still online, um, I know in Melody's presentation, she had mentioned that this was a priority of Repi Chiyama. If you could have Rep Kitago touch base with Repi Chiyama and just get any kind of information um, sent over to the board, um, that'd be appreciated as well, just so that we could have some context in order to craft this reso and work with uh, Melody further. Uh, John, Joe, go ahead, take my. Aloha, thank you for that update. Um, Barry, I had a quick question. You did mention that the uh, Board of Water Supply uh, Board or commissions had allocated $5 million for uh, new wells. And I was wondering if that money was for monitoring wells. And so I was wondering if that money was money that you needed for other things or where, uh, like I can appreciate that that is uh, a need and you guys are redirecting funding for that, but I wanted to double check and make sure that we weren't overlooking Oahu Kuleana in favor of covering for, uh, I mean, if, if we can find other sources that are closer to the cause of the problem for money to solve this, I feel like that's still an obligation that we should be pursuing. Thank you. Um, thanks, Joel. I mean, ultimately Thank at the end of the day, Right, although it is our water, and although uh, we do benefit from it, this was an issue that was created by the by the military. And so, um, ultimately, the money that comes out of monitoring these wells um, for our benefit should still come out of the military. And so, I don't believe pursuing taxpayer dollars to monitor a military mistake is something that um, that this board nor I can. Um, but we will work with Melody and looking forward, um, you know, funding to monitor the track. Um, of these chemicals, right? Because uh, in in any sense, right? We're all here. We're all on the same island, and we're all working towards the same water system, water goals. Barry, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. And just point of clarification: the five million was for treatment for Kalamilo wells. Uh, we are trying to fund. Uh, uh, we're funding um, from other funds to re to to build replacement wells. But to Chair, to your point, you know that's what the the. Um, uh, the, the legal action towards the, the Navy to repay us for the, the additional cost that the ratepayers are um, absorbing uh, to uh, deal with this um, tragic situation, uh, they should be, um, you know, paying us back. <laughs> should not be on our on our ratepayers. So totally agree there. Thank you. Illinois, Anti Rocky. I agree with Barry. This should be a Kako thing. That's what I'm mean. talking about. We gotta find solutions. We gotta find solutions together, and that's what I mean. Should we, you know, approach our uh, elected officials and have them push it for the navy or somebody help to pay for the um, monitoring wells? We need to do that because, you know, what is the most important thing on this earth is our water. We don't have water. We have nobody's going to be living. Mahalo. Mahalo, Antiraki. All right. Uh, Mahalo, Barry, for your insight. Mahalo, Melody, for a presentation. Uh, for everyone taking the time uh, to address this issue. Okay, moving on. Uh, we do have residents community concerns. Uh, we're going to limit that to two minutes each, um, just because we did allocate a lot of time for this presentation. Uh, we're just going to stick a little hard to time. Um, so right now, um, anyone in person would like to? Yeah, go ahead. Take the mic. Uh, could you please state your name? Sure. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sean Mark. I, I uh, have a property up on uh, on Floyd Road. And, and um, I'm hoping that there's somebody still on from the mayor's office, DPP, um, and it's specific to to a permitting issue that I've been struggling with for a couple of years related to um, a photovoltaic system on my residential property. And um, I'm hoping to be able to 
begin a dialogue with somebody at DPT and the mayor's office um, to try and better understand some of the challenges that, that I'm facing in, in getting a permit. It's been a couple of years that I've been at it, significant uh, engineering fees, but I haven't really gotten anywhere. So um, I, I'm, I'm just hoping that uh, some people in the mayor's office can reach out and I can kind of better understand some of the challenges they have and get back to my, my personal issue in residential properties. What do you um, anyone on from the mayor's office? Who was our mayor's rep? Regina, she left for a yeah. No, it's okay. Um, so we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead. Um, and put you in contact. Give you a POC for DPP. Um, but Uncle John, you want to address something? So are, are you um you're trying to put in a PV system? Uh, in, 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 that would be off grid. Or net metering well, connected to well, the grid. net metering is no longer available. I think for 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 my situation, for but um, it it's a it's a system that I'm ready to put in. It would be tied into to the heat code as well, so it wouldn't be a completely off grid. My problem is that the orientation of the of the home on the property is way wrong for football. Yeah, it would be thirty or forty percent inefficient. If it went on the home property, but I have a tractor barn that I'm trying to trying to get EV on. Mm. But it would, if I understand the statute correctly, the photovoltaic system on a property like that needs to be within 5,000 square foot of the poly, polygon of the house, and my tractor barn is outside of that 5,000. Your zone, your zone residential. Uh, Residential and an egg. And an egg. Okay. I, I don't I mean we could talk a lot about it. I, I'd be really interested in taking a look at it. we're off the grid in Wyoholi. Um, you know, people want to face their PV panels just the right way, 23 degrees and all of that. Um, or you add smoke panels. It may be inefficient, but it works. Um, so I would I applaud you for trying to go that route. But um me sorry, I think if you could just go on the mic. No, 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 go. Okay. No, go ahead. No, step, step up to the mic. Yeah, we just need for the public so they can hear online. City ordinance that this five thousand square foot radius, and and our only question is why we have twelve acres of land, you know, and Rachel. Okay. Um. So. I do have half sheet from like a, this is mayor's um, like concerns or anything. Uh, if you could leave your contact information and a brief description, sure. and then I'll relay the message and see if I can find someone that can help you with that. That'd be great. Okay, thank you. That's the table right over there. Jeff. Yeah, so right over there on that little okay. back table. If you guys want to grab, make sure, sure I'll make sure everything. Easy, and then we can get that back. Mahalo Nui, Uncle Rick. Sean, if you could make you feel any better, we waited an entire year, in fact, 14 months to build a storage structure so that we could wait another year to put our PV um, that was installed by Revolution. So this permitting system in the county is just totally broken. I mean, it's just, it's, it's nonsense. Yeah, I, I, I guess I would just say that I, I'm exploring, is there any kind of a waiver, any kind of an exemption under certain circumstances or whatever stuff? So, um, and I, I, I will leave my information and look forward to hearing from somebody. So, thank you. Mahalo, you guys. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll be sure to get your uh, correspondence back to the offices. Um, Amy, online. Go ahead. Great. Hi, folks. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is uh, Amy Lewison. Um, I used to be a member of the Kahalu Neighborhood Board for many years. The hat I'm wearing tonight, though, is I'm the treasurer for an organization called Hui Ulu Mea'ai for the cultivation of community self-reliance. Um, and I really wanted to just let the board know and the community know about a project that we're working on. So but a little bit of background, um, Huyulu has been a 501c3 nonprofit since the early 1980s, um, focusing on really diverse projects that promote agriculture, community-based economic development, and community-based education. We were instrumental in restoring the old Waiholi Poi factory as a community kitchen. Um, we developed and implemented a Roots and Wings community education program. We supported backyard gardening. Um, 
in the early 90s, the Kahalu Neighborhood Board joined with other windward parties to petition the Commission on Water Resource Management for some of the water from the Waiholi Ditch System to be returned to the windward streams. Some members of the board were on the board at that point as well, and I know they remember that. After a decade of litigation, um, some of that water is now released and flows into the windward streams once again. And Huyulu was the entity that was the steward of the funds that were raised to support that litigation effort. It was, as you can imagine, um, you know, it was over 10 years for the White Holy Water case to be litigated. So the project I'm here tonight to tell you about, though, is one that we're exploring. Huyulu is working with Shake Energy Collaborative um, to explore options for creating hydroelectricity using some of the returned ditch water it flows into White Holy Stream. The concept of this is that it would be a run of the river model where some water is diverted to flow through a turbine to generate electricity, and then it's returned, um, the water is returned to the stream. So it's not, you know, it doesn't take water out of the stream forever. It uses it and puts it back. And the goal of the project that we've been looking at is really twofold. So on blue sky days, when it's clear, um, it would connect to the Hawaiian electric grid and support the transition to renewables that the state is the state goal of 100% renewables going forward. But on gray sky days or stormy days when the power goes out because the lines are down or something has happened, we would trying to develop a microgrid system where we'd connect to the hydro system and provide power for a community resilience hub until regular power could be restored. So Huyulu has contracted with Pacific Hydro to do an initial feasibility study, and it's technically it's feasible. So now we're exploring how it could be connected to the Hawaiian electric grid, how a microgrid could be designed, like what would be the parameters of that and the cost of that, as well as understanding any sort of potential environmental impacts of that. So we're looking for input from the community. We really are trying to provide more community resilience um, for our community. Um, if you're interested in learning more about it, I know I'm on community resident concerns, I got a two minute limit here, but if you're interested in learning more about it, we would love to hear from people. Um, Joe Watt, who I think is in the room, has uh, is also a Huyu board member, and Joe has a sign-up sheet that people can sign in for, and we can make sure that you hear about any future meetings that we have and sort of keep everybody updated on sort of where we are with this project. Um, with that, I'm going to end. I think that was my two minutes, but I'm open to questions if people have them. Thank you very much, Chair and Boyd. Oh, Mahalo, Amy. Any questions for Amy? Okay. Anyone online? Questions? Uh, I see Marie with her hand up. Go ahead, Marie. Yeah, Amy, I just wanted to ask, are you connected with Serene or Vibrant? Joe knows. Uh, about these, um, are you working with them yet? We're not working with them yet. We do. We're we're really focused right now. I do. I know who they are. I mean, I I understand the group. So we're really focused right now on the concept of um, hydroelectricity using some of this water. I have had some conversations with folks across the state, and I think there's interest in like, well, heck, if we could do this here, would that be a way to sort of help power resilience hubs in other locations? If we can use this as sort of a, a pilot on how to do that. So we're not talking about building out a full resilience hub yet. We're just talking about how we get power to those um, sites. Yeah. Mahalo. Great. Joe, you want to say Marie. anything? You want to, you want to add? Um, I did just want to chime in and say that uh, we Yang with all of the vibrant Hawaii and Serene folks right now, I think that the goal is to better understand everyone's uh, concerns or interest or support. Uh, well, as well as figure out the questions that we need to answer before we can really decide whether or not this sounds like something that we should even pursue funding for. Um, so we're still very, very much in the conceptual stage of this. I think the time to bring it towards those other groups beyond our community is once we decide what direction we'd like to go and then if we do look for funding for it. So we're not at that point yet, but we're excited for everyone's uh, ideas yeah. it's it seems like it does like a lot of things at once i was like oh this seems like if we were going to try and build good stuff it seems like we might be building stuff like this thank you Mahalo. Mahalo. all right go ahead 
Amy, just um, I'll probably call you on it, but um, it's too bad Jeff Lloyd is not around because Jeff was one that was really instrumental in when they built the Wainiha hydroelectric station in Wainiha and Kauai, and it, it actually sends power over, and that's what pr provides power for the um, McBride or provided power for the McBride sugar plantation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and I think it's in the grid now, so you might want to go check that out and understand that system a little bit. Just anyway. Yeah, Pacific Hydro, which is the a hydrologist that we hired to sort of do this, actually lives on Kauai, and he's the one that did some of the Kauai projects. So, yeah, Kauai's ahead of the rest of the state in this um, and sort of their efforts in doing this. We have had some preliminary talks with Hawaiian Electric, with the State Energy Office, with HHFTC, um, as well as some community folks. In general, people are, are supportive of the concept because of the dual purpose of it. Um, they also recognize it's a big lift, right? And we, we do too. But as someone said to me, so what? This is what you do when you retire. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> Mahalo. Well, then, uh, few right. more. Just keep them quick, you guys. Yep, go ahead, Uncle John. Just real quick, uh, for those who may not be familiar with, with the Waiholi Ditch, you know, just to uh, the geographical context, the Waiholi Ditch goes from Kahana, um, Parallel to the the Kola Range, all the way to Waiahole, before it, before water can either go to the leeward side or the windward side, that water is flowing um, every day, and whichever way the allocation is, whether we get it back in our streams and going into Kaniwe Bay and Estuary or going leeward, um, there is always water flowing in that ditch, and that kinetic energy is what we want to harness. This is a system that exists at about the uh, 750, 800 foot elevation. So there's a lot of head, a lot of pressure that you really need to do hydroelectric. So it's kind of ideal. Um, and it's a system that's well over 100 years old engineering. Um, you know, modern Hawaii would be foolish not to try and turn that to its best possible uses today. So I just wanted to add yeah. that in. Thanks. That's your Rocky. Yeah. Good to see you. It's good to see you still involved with the community, Amy. Right on. Um, then you're looking <laughs> Thanks, for the support. Rocky. Actually, you're looking for the support of the community, and I fairly support it. And I think we all should support alternative energy is the way to go today. Because yeah. too much, yeah. you know, too much is happening on this earth. So I, I would like to check out what you guys maybe check out one of you guys meetings, see what's happening. Although we have no more water in here, Kia Valley anymore, yeah. but there can be other alternatives yeah. to look into. Mahalo. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I would love to respond to that very briefly. Again, thinking about this is not just something that would be occurring in Waihole Valley. I would really love to see this, particularly for the windward sides of, of all of the islands of Hawaii, where we're a little bit less appropriate for solar panels and nobody wants wind turbines. I'm thinking about this as something that, particularly hearing your story about Heiakea, where you used to have streams road comes through no more, that water is someplace. And if you can find out where it is and we can pipe it, it, if this is something that is feasible, affordable, functional, and that water has disappeared somewhere, could go into a pipe and then come back out and feed lo'i or feed streams closer to the shore. I don't know what the solution is there, but it, my understanding is that the state is not gonna take action until there's a clear benefit for the state. And I feel like this is an opportunity to tie into resiliency, to tie into a renewable energies and do a lot of things that also gets water back into our streams. And so I'm really excited to see if this is something that's possible. Um, I'm hesitant, but I know that there are answers to these questions before we make a decision. And I'm really excited to go through this process. Thank you. I'm all a Joel. Welcome. Yeah. Uncle Cliff, can you keep it quick? Yeah, let me share something with you folks. Kahalu had one hydroelectric plant. And Wahe Stream was, was supplying water to that plant. And most of you folks don't know where the thing was. That was the old rice mill they had on water wheel. The electric plant supplied power just for the rice mill. It's right up here, but a fire station, you go down the road. The, that was the old rice mill there. And the yeah, story is about that. Yeah. Mahalo. Thank you. Thanks, Uncle Cliff. Appreciate it. No, Amy, go ahead. Close your well, mind. I was going to say, I think that there is the potential there. I mean, the Waiholi stream is the biggest. The ditch system itself is 27 million gallons a day, about half of which is flowing onto the windward side. But uh, Cliff is right that there are other streams that also have the capacity 
maybe in a smaller amount. And, you know, we don't know exactly what that's going to be yet, but we feel like now's the time to um, really try to explore this concept and explore microgrids. Um, Hawaiian Electric, when they when we did the Ko'olau Poco Community Resilience um, Program that they did a couple of years ago, they're really looking for ways to maybe utilize microgrids to to supply power to communities that get cut off for whatever reason. Um, they're talking about it as bringing a truck in, and we were thinking, well, what if we use a natural resource that we have that we could um, use not to, I mean, I spent years on the White Holy Water case. I would be the first person to say you can't take the water if you're going to um, harm the stream. And so we would design it in a way that it's run of the river, that the stream uh, ecosystem is intact and that the water gets back into the stream to support the lower reaches of the stream, to support agriculture, to support aquaculture out in the bay. So I, I just think it's an opportunity. I mean, maybe it won't work, but I kind of think we're onto something. Everybody I talk to says, let's go for it. So let's go figure it out. So, wow. and one, one last thing is Huyulu was um, successful in applying for a, um, Na a National Department of Energy um, Solvent Prize, and we got an initial um, prize was awarded to us. Only 25 in the country were um, were successful in that. There's a second phase to that that only those 25 groups can apply for. That probably only going to be about 10. I don't know whether we could get it or not, but um, it, even on the national level, the Department of Energy recognizes that this might be a unique opportunity to support you know, sort of communities that are uh, vulnerable because they're isolated, so. Yeah. I'll appreciate that. Dave, did you have a quick question? I see your hand raised. Yeah, hi, Dave Mullins again. Sorry, my having camera issues as well. Uh, a couple of things, uh, Amy, can we get your contact information? i um, sure like to uh, be able to find out more and get involved in what you're talking about there. Yep, yep, so definitely what I'd like to do is have, you know, let, uh, Joe Watt works at Key. Connect with Joe. Um, he's got a sign up sheet, and then we're going to get information out to everybody who signs up for that. And oh, I'd love I'm to on, talk to you, Dave. I'm, I'm online. I know you're on. Yeah. We Joe's go got ahead. another. Yeah, we can go send ahead. Send you an online system. Yeah, Dave, we'll go Good ahead and um, send over the, you okay. know, the required information and then collect that from you, and then we'll add your name to the list. Make sure you're in the loop. You, you can share my key project Great. email as well. Right on. Easy. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. Thank okay, you for and time. then, yeah, no, right, go ahead. My other quick, quick, quick thing is uh, about the guy with the solar. Um, the there's a, a federal uh, free app. It's called Solar App that we've been trying to get the city and county or the state to uh, take and put in place. It, the app is free, and uh, um, it's all paid for. And um, so it would take now. It takes people like two years for solar panels. It could take like a day, even like just a couple of hours. And um, it's been like pulling teeth to get the city and county to uh, put this into place. They've got their own uh, app that they're trying to work with, but it has not been successful. So uh, I would say to the man who's trying, who's all uh, jammed up on his solar panels is to contact the city and county and uh, to say, why don't you move towards the solar app? Because um, uh, that's why the building permits are all blo blo um, backed up. It's because these solar, there's so many solar panels, and this they don't have to be in the system. They can be easily processed with just the solar app. So I'll give you that information. Thank you guys so much. Mahalo, Dave. Thank you again for your time. Um, uh, I do want to just make a comment, right? And um, keep us in the loop, Joe. Yeah, regarding this project, keep us involved. Um, we, this is something we definitely like to support. Um, whether it's you know. Through correspondence or through presentations for the community, um, just let us know, and however we can support, we'll be we'll more than willing to work with you guys. Great, thank you, Parker. And wow. actually, we are hoping to have a community meeting maybe in early November, and we will certainly let the neighborhood board know about that. So, so, and I just wanted to say thanks for the time tonight, and nice to see everybody. Thanks for the work you're doing. <laughs> wow. Um, Melody, did you have a question? Relating to the, the water project. Thank you. Thank you, chair. I want to thank Amy too. I think that's a, a wonderful project that you're working on uh, from the environmental caucus standpoint. We've always looked at hydro as an alternative renewable energy and we look towards uh, Wilson Lake Wilson 
as well as the new one reservoir. But there's so many, you know, like Lake Wilson, for example, you got federal ownership and state ownership. It was just really complex. So for you to move forward with with this could be the first project of many projects, which is what we really need. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Thanks. Cool. All right, Amy, looks like you got everyone's support. We'll be on board and we'll be in touch with you going forward. All in a way. Thank you. Um, Ian, did you have anything you wanted to say for Amy before she headed out? No, that's good. Uh, Bombay. Yeah, Bombay. Okay, okay, shoot. Right on. Oh, for the residents' concern. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Ian. Um, Ian, so Ian's going to be speaking on behalf of uh, someone who couldn't make it to give his testimony. Yeah, so a good friend and a, a very strong um, cultural sites advocate, Adam Lee. He actually was on, but had to go send testimony. And this is really clarification about the bill 64 that I was talking about earlier, because he hadn't jumped on yet. So um, I'll just, I'll read this and the action is to provide testimony. If you feel um, it's important at the next city council meeting. So Aloha Mahalo for accepting my written testimony. My name is Adam Lee, local born and raised in Oahu would like to bring attention and opposition to Bill 64, which completely replaces the master use table with a new table that has no red line reference to the existing master table. And I believe he's talking about the land ordinance use table. This allows existing land uses to be deleted and new land uses to be created without transparency. One of the important items that has passed years of readings from the original bill named Bill 10 it creates a new use called transfer of development in the miscellaneous section that allows anyone to openly buy, sell, and trade air rights over historic sacred spaces. There was no such thing as transfer of development in the current land use ordinance, and there has been zero conversation about this proposed change because nobody knows that it was discreetly added under a name that doesn't quite explain its impact. If Bill 64 is passed, those air rights over sacred spaces will be sold to the highest bidder to be used in another property anywhere in Oahu. I doubt that SHPD gave permission to sell air rights over Kauai Ha'o and building rights tied to sacred cultural sites. Civic clubs and cultural groups were not consulted and I anticipate that there would be zero support if there was such transparency. The perfect example of the immediate irreversible impact from the passing of Bill 64 is Kauai Ho'o Church, which is a historic site, but also on land zone commercial. The passing of Bill 64 would unfortunately make the church attractive for someone who wants to strip the sacred land of its air rights, selling sacred air space. This would create a situation where the worst type of buyers own the most sacred sites. There are many other sites just like Kauai Ha'o Church that would go to the highest bidder in this new land grab by people who have no concern for the preservation of the historic importance of the land and space. And it goes on to say the next city council meeting regarding this particular issue of Bill 64 and the new proposed use of transfer of development is October 22nd at 9 a.m. Uh, at city council for anyone who would like to testify in person or remotely. Thank you very much for allowing me to testify. Aloha, Adam. Right on, Molly. Uh, if you get yeah, CEO ahead. of North Shore Stables. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. If you could uh, send that over to me, um, just so that we can, maybe we can consider inserting those into the minutes. Yeah. I would be happy to. Thank you so much for allowing me to read this testimony. I appreciate yeah, sure. it. Mahalo, yeah. no. It's really important. So I support Adam in this opposition for sure to Bill 64. Oh, Thank you. Appreciate it. Mahalo for his uh for his testimony and for, for reading that out to everybody. Yes. Uncle Rick. You're welcome. I got two things. Um I'll try to breeze through the first one. We have two dark months um, throughout the year for our board. And I would suggest that we pick one of those two dark months to um put exclusively towards this hurricane preparedness, because it doesn't seem like it's on anybody else's radar, but for our Moku, for our standpoint, we should assemble information as to where to get potable water, um, how we can 
get a hold of one another to help out resources for fixing roofs and all that kind of stuff. And so if we could get city officials and so forth here and get around the table and talk about that for our MOPU, that would be great. Second topic is that I, two Sundays ago, I watched a very distressing segment on 60 Minutes. And I haven't really, to be honest, watched 60 Minutes in years, but it was basically around um, folks that got uh, affected by Hurricane Ian, which passed through Florida in 2022. They're now just getting around to having the adjusters going out and, and um, it's, these are licensed adjusters that go out and look at the situation for the insured person. And, and there were like 2,500 of these. And whereas the um, adjuster would come up with a report that's that thick, the insurance company altered it so that it was that thick, offered them five cents on the dollar. That's just evil. That's just, you know, for, for dutiful people that pay their, um, pay their insurance premiums dutifully, and they lose just about everything from a storm. To have that happen is just nonsense. And when I went to go in and and copy that segment to pass along to somebody else, I found out, I found another story that was done by 60 Minutes in 2015 around um, Hurricane Sandy, and again, 2,500, 3,000 people, and the insurance companies just took the risk that they played the odds that. If they did this, then most would not challenge their comeback, and 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 they just got nothing. And I, just, I think legislate as legislators, lawmakers, we need to pay attention. I'm not saying that that will, will happen here, but it could happen. We need to have our lawmakers. I'm I'm disappointed that Senator Takuda didn't have anybody that came along tonight because um, we really got to look at this whole insurance situation. I think these two last storms that breeze through Florida are going to just bankrupt that whole industry, and we have to look at it. I think on the heels of Hurricane Iniki, the legislator, legislature had to appropriate a ton of money to put money back into the insurance industry to, so people could get um, hurricane insurance. The other thing is that happened on Maui, which I, is really questionable, but again, it's insurance companies. Um, Basically, the, the hurricane insurance folks said that the storm has to be right here for there to be coverage for hurricane um, insurance and that you have to um, go get coverage under wind insurance. So really we need um, a real clarification for the public's um, benefit to understand how all of this works. And I mean, I just think to myself, if a storm were to turn right and go right up the Kaibi channel and um, the the, the worst part of the storm is the northwest quadrant, and that just breezed over Honolulu. Would people be covered by the hurricane? You know, if, if the storm is 50 miles out, would would there be coverage? I don't know. But lawmakers need to look into this, and we need to do it now. Start looking at it now because um, it, it, it it shouldn't be the dutiful insure ins the insured people that lose everything shouldn't have to hire an attorney to go and fight the insurance company, which will they'll lose even more money. That's just not, that's just not right. Mahalo. Mahalo, correct. Um, we'll try and get in touch with, I, I have um, I have a connection over at Haima, so I know that we can get some disaster preparedness um, over to our side of the island, especially um, as we have December off for recess. Yeah. So with November being the last meeting, that'll be November 13th of this year. Um, any date after that, we can start um, working together and get that coordinated. Uncle John, you want to say something? I was going to say, I think, you know, sometimes what a neighborhood board can do is um, co sponsor with others. We don't have to take the whole job on ourselves, but to uh, collaborate with other neighborhoods. I get put on the post. Um, I, I'm, the, I'm the way down here, I was listening to NPR, and there was this one phrase that put that woman put out there we, we cannot outrun climate change. And that could be the theme. We can talk about so many different things, energy, water, whatever, uh, you know, health, uh, insurance, all of those things. But if we jump in together with other neighborhood boards, we're going to be that much stronger. We're going to get that, that much more of a robust discussion um, going. And it should be something that's really well publicized, which we can put a little bit of our, our treasury funds towards that, along with other neighborhood boards, well publicized and televised. Um, I'm a, I'm a television guy coming back. Maybe it's I don't know, Instagram, whatever. 
but, but we do need to join in with others to uh, take on addressing those really big issues that touch on so many different uh, aspects of our lives. Thank you. Oh, my, oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, no, I definitely support that. Um, I, I'd like to work with, especially our neighborhood boards in the Ko'ola Ko district, yeah. right? Waimanalo, Kaniohe, um, and even working alongside Ko, uh, Ko'ola Law, right? Anti Bernie and Mount Kahana, right? Similar issues that stem to us over here in Waikani, Waihole, water issues, land issues, EV issues, right? Um, development, right? Ag issues, like all these things that they overlap. We should be making sure that we're not stepping on each other's toes, but rather working in tandem towards collective goals to benefit all of us as we live on. Right? So, yeah, okay. Um, Marie, any concern? Residents are concerned, yeah. you had a hand up? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, I, since I've been talking to you about this for years, I'm really happy to hear that you're getting more and more concerned about it. And I'd like to afford you. This is not necessarily a concern, but an announcement. Okay. I do that here because it's pertinent to what we're talking about. Okay. Chair. Okay. Um, there, um, is an exercise at, um. There is an exercise, uh, community emergency response exercise regarding search and rescue triage. Evacuation medical uh, coming up this uh, coming Saturday. It at um, I don't know where, if you know where Battery Harlow is. It's right up at uh, Diamond Head. Uh, this is a culmination of an exercise training that Paula has been doing for the past couple of weeks. Um, you don't have to know <laughs> anything. It would be really really good if you could come even as a survivor. To this type of thing to learn what is involved in community emergency response. 1 of the things that these communities that are suffering disasters keep on complaining about is that government's not there. Government's not there. Well, government is not going to be there. They cannot be everywhere. How many fire department people do we have in Kahalu? Five. Okay, so we take care of ourselves. If you can't make it this coming Saturday. I would uh, ask you to consider a joint exercise that Kailua is uh, hosting on um, November uh, 2nd in Kailua. And I put this stuff I think, in, in the chat up at the beginning. Um, and then if you're even further getting um, Concerned about actually responding as a community is going to have to, uh, particularly folks like us on the windward side. Uh, we're going to hold, uh, Kaneohe Kahalu is going to be holding a full training program in January into February. So I'm offering you uh, three uh, opportunities to find out more about how a community has to respond or can respond to what folks. On the mainland have been dealing with and you've been watching. Uh, so, 1 is this Saturday and my contact info is on the chat and another 1 is in uh, November. And then the other thing I wanted to ask you about is, um. Uh, I thought our fire department had uh, drones. Um, they said, no, would that be the type of thing that uh, we could ask we, the board here. Uh, or even something like KK cert could ask, uh, like a CDBG grant. For our fire department, along with training. Um, because that's what we're going to need in this community, a drone. I, as well as I think, I think we would Thank need you. to go ahead and. You know, get the, get the breakdown of what the program is as far as what HFD is running currently. Um, how they're gonna, how they're training their pilots and the credentials needed to pilot these drones for Hawaii fire department. Um, but as far as that, I would, yeah, I would anything past that. I would let, you know, have to talk to the captain. Um, uncle Ken, did you want to add something? Wait. Uh, yeah, that's what, um, uh, artist was talking about earlier. Uh, th that's, that's the example we're working on. Uh, we, we actually went through, um. A program that's already in existence, but, but that's around the university of Mississippi. And it is also for the year 2024. 
So we're, we're actually working on that and doing what we can to get our local um, pilots and drones certified and operational, hopefully through Windward Community College. So there's all kind of opportunities here. Uh, by the way, I'd, I'd like anybody who has a chance to look at the FEMA website uh, updated in uh, May when they when the preparedness fair was uh, it was updated it if you look through it it's I did a deep dive on drones and I got finally I got to the drone part and then I accessed it and it was another deep dive so there's all kind of good stuff there at the fema.gov website I strongly recommend that people take a look at it but uh, no, we are working on that, and uh, uh, thank you very much, Marie, uh, for the wonderful job you're doing, and we got your back. <laughs> yeah, thank Mahalo. you. I want your I want your front. I want you out there. Back. Yeah, Mahalo to you both. Mahalo to you, Uncle Chair, Mahalo to you, Marie. One more thing. Um, I had approached you guys last year in November uh, right. about uh, more. Uh, awareness in your districts, your individual districts about possible resilience centers and or hubs and or pod sites. Uh, this vibrant Hawaiian serene program and castle foundation. As we come into December, we're, uh, we're really trying to pinpoint something to work on for next year. I'm not asking that you have anything definitive. I'm not asking for blueprints. I'm not asking for anything. I'm asking, uh, except for uh, a, a, a recommendation from you reps uh, about what might possibly work. So far, besides key project, we have the GSO Center in Temple Valley that we uh, are trying to open up to be a resilience hub response center. During that's not much. <laughs> That much, so um, anyway, throwing that back out again. Okay, and you have my contact info, or go through Ken, and uh, let's try and move this along. Yeah, move it along instead of talking about what we can do. A lot to do. Hundred percent. No, Mahalo. support that, especially with you know with the disasters in the news. People are you got that right. Lo looking to make making make those moves, make yeah. conscious decisions. And, and please, chair again. Anybody listening to stuff and you're hearing, oh, complaints against FEMA and complaints against that, the government is not going to be here. We right. are the ones that are going to be here. We are the ones that have to respond. Okay, then the government can come in and help. So, particularly in our area. So, you know, just get real with what it is is out there and not listen to the, oh, I want somebody else to do it. No, Mahalo. it's you. Mahalo, Marie. Appreciate it. Um, okay. Uh, I don't see anyone else's hands up for concerns, questions, right? So we're going to go ahead and move on to board business. Uh, Mahalo to those who came in person uh, presenting and also, you know, online for giving your manaho. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and take a quick recess. Uh, we'll come back and at 8.35. It's 8.31 right now. We'll take a four-minute recess. I'll come back and then we'll proceed with board business. Hey, Ken, since I see that you're still online, I wanted you to know, I saw that Hawaii CC offers the drone certification courses. So I've already reached out to my non credit to find out what we can do. Great news. All right. Very good. I got to jump on things while I'm thinking of them because by tomorrow yeah. at 2 p.m., God knows what will be in my head that I'm supposed to put out fire right away. Really? Well, Ian, it's nice to see you too once a month. Nice to see you, artists. I know I'm there sure. twice a week, but I never come down the hill. I uh, know. I never get out of my office practically. Yeah. Like every now and then I walk to the other side of campus. I'm like, oh, it's so pretty over here. Yeah. Well, I admit I go to Trio. 
<laughs> yeah. Best program ever. <laughs> in fact, I'm still in my office right now. I saw that. I was like, oh, artist, you're working too late. But thank you for helping Ken with this and, and thank you for your regular updates. And glad to hear yeah. about uh, congratulations on the prison graduate. That's uh, Jane we talking with just yay. I know. I wish. I wish Jean's smiling face could have been. I'm sure she was with us that day. It was super joyous. Although we forgot about bringing in some music, and one of the uh, prison sorry. officials was upset. They felt we hadn't consulted with them enough, even though we got permission from the entire state to bring in audio and video. So they refused to let oh, our equipment in. Man. So I don't have any documentation. Oh, poo. But understandable, huh? Yeah, they understandable. They, prison is so capricious. We got their yeah. we got the state department of corrections to approve it, but then someone at the prison itself decided that they hadn't approved it, so it's not going in. So therefore. Mm -hmm. Bummers. Yeah. That's okay. The day was beautiful. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Take the wind. Something right? from the whole day. In that did they announce artists about your being recognized by the Hawaiian Civic? Uh, no, but that was they, they recognized the college. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they recognized the college. And yes, I should have noted that. That should have been my third piece. But I, I always get nervous. Usually, I write down. But I was, I was on three phone calls trying to make sure I didn't miss my spot. So. Like, okay, I know it's representative Kitagawa and then me. <laughs> if there were other things the college should have known early on. I was, I was on the meeting, but I wasn't really able to pay full attention till about. Let's see, it must have been Senator Awa halfway through that report. I was able to pay attention. Hey, artists. Oh, yeah. sorry. Sorry, Ian. My bad. Um, I just had a question. This is Keone Machado. Um, oh, hey, Keone. How's it going? Um, so I have a question. Um, I was a student at Windward when I started my my plant science degree, but like I'm now finishing up at the Leeward campus. But there are certain um, like certificates that I was going for with um, Dr. Inga White. Yes. Um, is it? Possible because I think that I fulfilled all the requirements for those certificates. How is it that I could get that? Do I have to like re-register over there, Winward? And oh, we should just talk. We should just get the counselors to talk about it. The counselors could certify you for. Do you remember who your counselor was when you were here? I don't. That was okay. like uh, like two thousand. Permission to look up your file. Okay. Okay. Let me log in. <laughs> is the meeting in recess yeah. yeah yep just for a couple more minutes but and this is good artistry you stay yeah. there. you got a nice little okay. cut over there we're gonna go Artists ahead and... okay, we're gonna okay, okay we're back I, I, I'll, I'll actually come to the school and talk to you artists okay thanks guys yeah we're gonna we're gonna bring the meeting back to order you guys Uncle Cliff will, Uncle Cliff is returning. Yeah, no worries. No. Okay. No worries. Okay, calling a meeting back to order. Um, okay, we're gonna do this quick um, because Rachel did advise us, right? Neighborhood boards, we do have a three hour limit. Uh, we are approaching nine o'clock. And so um, what we're gonna do, you guys could take one, pass it down. Uh, we're gonna be going to board business. Um, first point of business under board business, we're going to be doing the discussion review and approval of the sub district 6 vacancy flyer. So what you have in front of you guys. So, sub district 6 outlined on the map is basically that loop that goes behind times, right? Um, who you go and all that community back there. Yeah. Um, so based off of this. Um, we did get a few revisions that Rachel said needed to happen. Um, so, um, some amendments to what you see on the flyer, right? So we're going to have to include number 29, right? As, as far as the title for the neighborhood board. So it'll read Kahalu neighborhood board number 29 vacancy. 
uh, similar to how it's listed on the agenda, right? Um, we'll also include, include that um, in the language below where it says Kahalu Neighborhood Board. It'll say Kahalu Neighborhood Board number 29 is seeking interested volunteers to fill our two subdistrict six vacancies. Included are the subdivisions of Mokulua, Kahalu Colony and Gardens, Ahui Manu Gardens, and Temple Valley Shopping Center. Um, an amendment to the line with the asterisk, which is underlined. Um, currently, it reads applicants must be registered to vote with the neighborhood board commission office to qualify. Uh, Rachel indicated that we can change that language to applicants must live within the subdistrict six area. So just to keep it more general, because we can take care of that, um, you know, registration upon their uh, interest. Um, further language will read interested volunteers can inquire about the vacancies in person at the next Kahalu board. Na Kahalu neighborhood board number 29 meeting. Um, we will have, um. I just wanted to keep that language general because we don't know how long this will take uh, to address these vacancies. So I just wanted to keep the date, uh, you know, the time relatively general. I think that's set. We're still set six to nine here at key project, same address. And then that QR code there uh, links to the neighborhood board PDF that verifies address for sub districts. So um, I have a correction. Yes, Uncle Ken. Um, it's not Temple Valley Shopping Center. It's Ko'olau Shopping Center. The name. Temp they changed the name from Temple Valley Shopping Center to Ko'olau Shopping Center. Well, Uncle Ken, thank you for the reminder. Um, so I think just so that we can, um, you know, allow others to see the final product. I'll go ahead and I'll take these amendments, make those changes, bring it back for November so that we have that finalized before we take break and head off into Christmas. Um, if that's all good with you folks, I'll leave that there. Any questions, concerns? Um, so I just noticed that we didn't um, state like, you know, what day, so maybe like, for example, today is what was it Wednesday? Is it first Wednesday or second Wednesday? Second, second Wednesday. So we might want to mention that on the uh, flyer as well. Second Wednesday, correct. Thank you. That's a good point. Mal and we will do add that right with the date and the time. And there'll be a PDF version that you'll send out digitally. I can send to a couple of my friends. Yep. Uh, well, once I get all these changes in there, I'll send it out to Rachel and then Rachel can send that out to everyone else. Perfect. Thank you. Chair. Right on. Thank you. All of you guys. So, yeah, appreciate it. Uh, okay. Moving on to the approval of the Wednesday, September 11, 2024 regular meeting minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Move. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have it moved by Uncle John, seconded by Auntie Rocky. Um, did you do roll? Did anybody? I'm sorry, anybody... I, I'm sorry, if I may, there was a section in there uh, from me in the, in the uh, comments, and it, it said something about um, it looks like, it reads like um, I was asking, I, I was expressing. Um, uh, and an urgency to uh, apply for funds. I was uh, referring to you, the board, in a time frame. There's a, a pronoun in there someplace. It's down at the bottom in community concerns. I'm sorry I wasn't prepared to even be here at this time. But it, it really should read that I want you to be prepared to apply for, for the board, I should say, the board to be prepared Perfect. for funds. Can you find it? I'm sorry. Yeah, we can, um, we can have, um, Rachel, go ahead. Um, she'll identify that, um, bring that up to us. Let's see. I think we have a copy right at the table. Give us 1 second. Do you know? Was that the community concerns part? And it yeah. had to do with me and KK cert and the concerns about uh, vibrant funding. Okay. No, yeah. yeah so right now, the, the, 
Right now, the language reads, um, she is concerned that they are missing out on great financial and support services. Um, and the would they you be all you? right? Yes, would right. you be all right for us to change the word they to the neighborhood board? The, the board, yeah, right, right. the Kahalu Neighborhood Board. Yes, all right. thank you. All right. Is that all right with the rest of members as far as the amendment to the minutes? Online and in person. Yeah, all right. and you might want to correct the spelling of her name as well. Oh, yeah, mahalo. So we'll go ahead and, and change Mary to Marie. I e. Yes, mahalo. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, with that, uh, do I have uh, a motion to approve the new amended minutes? So moved. Uncle John seconded. Auntie Rob. Um, all right. All opposed say no. All in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Sounds good. All right. That goes pass. Minutes pass. Moving on to subdistrict reports. Any reports? Subdistrict one. Nope. Uh, subdistrict two. Subdistrict three. Uncle Ken, subdistrict four. Negative. Five. And six. We're still searching. Yeah. No reports. <laughs> Uh, moving on to announcements. Oh, yeah, Auntie Rocky. So we so we had two sweeps of the homeless in Hei'i Okay, how did that go? Okay, so we're gonna be doing a follow up on those sweeps. Malinui, um, like good to see the thing address. Um, okay, moving on to announcements. Uh, I did. You have an announcement? Okay. But, um. Okay, we're gonna do starting at A. We have Oahu White Cane Walk. This was um, something that is put on by um, DHS and um, DVR, Divisional Vocational Rehab. This is from Uncle Donald, um, as he is a uh, legally blind individual who advocates for ADA and accessibility services for the public. They will be doing a White Cane Walk, which is be going right from the Capitol Rotunda all the way to Iolani Palace. So shut the walk. So if you guys get free time. Friday, October 18th, they'll be doing that if you'd like to support. Um, the next regular board meeting is going to be scheduled for Wednesday, November 13th at 6 p.m. here at Key Project. Uh, I would also like to make the announcement that I most likely will not be here to uh, run that meeting. So I'll be in touch with Vice Chair um, or Uncle Dan uh, just to see um, their capacity as far as uh, running that meeting that day. It'll be my dad's 60th birthday. So we're going to be celebrating something. When's it? Meeting is going to be November 13th, Wednesday, November, November 13th. 13th. Got it. Mal. And then I know it's not on the agenda, but we did have one more announcement from Uncle John. You want to go? Yeah. Um, there's uh, the Banana Festival, uh, Ho'olaulea Maya on, on the 20th um, at Windward Community College from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. There's a speaker from 9 to 10 that morning. Um, and th there is a fee to be a part of it. It's going to be really interesting. Uh, information about invasives, information about bananas. The speaker, uh, Gabe, is is absolutely expert on bananas. For more information, Laurie Carlson, C A R L S O N uh, 808 330 5049. I would encourage people to attend. It's, gonna, it's a unique opportunity. So, uh, Matthew Rocky? Small kind request. When we have in our, our meeting, could we ask maybe the speakers to at least show themselves, especially our board members? At least you know, sure, sure. Of courtesy, mahalo. Of course, I'll call. I'll great. Getting back room two hundred three for our neighborhood board. Uh, that would have to be followed up with Uncle John and Joe. Um, but I'm sure we can we can keep working on this. Like do that? Yeah, can we can bring that up in November? We need to discuss. Bigger space, bigger people, or bigger issues. Um, anything else? Just one last Still thing. Here, one, one last oh, thing. Ian? Uh, John, I picked this up last time I was over there at Key Project. Do we have the YHA Festival this weekend, October 12th, coming up? Um, or I know Joe had brought this up. So, anyway, just brought that forward if you're around. Thank you. Awesome. Molinary. So just a just a touch base, yeah, as far as the um the vacancy flyer. I'm gonna go ahead. So we're gonna defer that item. We'll we'll post, roll that over till November. Um when you guys get a chance to look at uh, the final version. Okay. Um if there are no other announcements, Richard. 
All right, no other announcements. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Can I entertain that? So one motion. Second, can I get a second? All right, moved by John, seconded by Rocky. All in favor? All right. All right, Malanui, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Ahui ho.